memory, though. Ah, uh, yes. Beautiful Scarlet Hollow. Hello, hello. Welcome, Scarlet Hollow. I wanted to play this, and now is the perfect time to do so. Because of this. Because it is a visual novel. Luckily for us, that means that there's not a lot for me to do. But our choices do matter here. I could, um... I could end up killing a lot of people. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is something I could. Hello. Hello, James Rose. Hello, James Ross. Welcome, welcome. I almost said James Rose. I was really close to it. <laughs> <sighs> this is, Scarlet Hollow is made by the same people who made, um... Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Slay the Princess. And I really like that. So I'm gonna really like this. I just know I am. I'm excited for it. There's only one thing I'm hoping for. Oh, our name. I'll go with Lee Lee for now. The city we live in. I live in the city of beans. Oh, huh, that's kind of nice. I am a she-her. <laughs> but not a her-she. I don't like chocolate that much. Okay. Two of them? Strange and unusual. You see the threads of reality in ways others cannot. Tough as nails. The pinnacle of fitness. That's not me. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> An imposing presence that commands the room. A mean right hook. Keen eye. Observant with a knack for picking up small details. Empathetic. Book smarts, well read and rational, but uh, possesses a wealth of is 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 um, a wealth of knowledge, <laughs> and known to use it. A talented researcher. You can talk to animals. Animals can talk to you. A gift and a curse. Good at lying and hard. Hard to lie to. A fast talker, you can read people and read the room. No door can hold you. And extremely good looking. A natural flirt. And people just like you. Probably because you're a good person. Probably. What to choose, what to choose. Well, I like street smarts. So I definitely want street smarts. And I think I want book smarts. Strange and unusual. You see threads of reality in other ways. Yeah, I think I, I, I think I want to just be smart, smart. Book smart and street smart. Those are the traits I pick. Are they good traits to have? We'll find that out. Uh, you jolt awake as the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you'd only just managed to start drifting off. And now here you are awake again and still exhausted. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing the bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to resert uh, its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. The long lost cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of bus rides with countless late night stops and CD dust, uh, CD depots, that would have never, uh, that would have felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You would normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of the Pauline Scarlet, your cousin's mother and your aunt, seemed like something you should ignore. Shouldn't ignore. Don't, don't, don't pay attention to me. You shouldn't ignore that. 
even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Fortunately, the end of your long journey is in sight. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. So anyway, as I was saying, Hello. Oh no, he's still here. He's been sitting next to you for the past five hours. Talking at, talking at you, not with you, at you. Without pause. You're not sure if he even stopped when you started to doze off. At first you thought he was just being friendly, but that was several hours of one-sided conversation ago. I was up in Maryland looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was dumb. Me and my buddies were doing our usual prank stuff. You know, pushing joggers into the harbor, that sort of thing. Oh, no, buddy, no. No, don't do that. Don't do that, buddy. I would also like to say, dude, what's wrong with you? I'm gonna remain... I'm gonna remain silent. I'm just gonna, maybe... Maybe if we ignore him, he'll stop. <laughs> you do your best to keep a blank face, waking up by extension. Accidentally giving this strange man permission to keep talking to you was a mistake. So this girl comes up to us, swinging her purse, yelling about how she was gonna call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit my friend and he said it hurt a lot. So I guess she really was mad and not just playing. But she kept swinging, and soon enough, she lost her balance and fell into the harbor all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh and finished her out. No, fished her out. <laughs> and her phone got soaked so she couldn't call the cops on us. We didn't wind up hanging out all day. She kind of became my girlfriend after that. And we've been on and off for about a year, so it's pretty serious. Uh-huh. I don't think I like this guy. <laughs> Though about five months ago, she tried to break up with me, like for real, and geez. You ever just get mad? You just wanna like kill somebody? Oh. Oh, that's what our things are. I see. We get little extra things for being street smarts. Yeah, I'll use my street smarts. Stop it. <laughs> Honestly, stop it. Stop what? Whatever it is you think you're doing right now, you know what I'm talking about. This whole corner a stranger on the bus and try to make them uncomfortable act, I'm not playing along. All right, all right. Maybe I never really wanted to kill her, even if I threatened it a little bit. Anyways. She's giving birth to our son right now, so I'm trying to get out to Virginia to be there for it. But I don't know if I'm, like, into that stuff, so I might just wind up on a bus to New York or something instead. I've always wanted to go there. Honestly, have you ever thought about seeing a therapist? Maybe it would help if you talked to someone about these feelings, someone professional. Not a stranger you met on the bus. I'm not licensed or anything, but it seems like you might have a personality disorder. It might be worth looking into. Nah, I don't need to do that kind of stuff. Bus strangers are the best therapists. I feel a lot better after talking to you. Anyways, where'd you say you were headed? I didn't. No need to be nasty, I was just asking. Well, it's none of your business, sir. Not like I'm gonna follow you off the bus or anything. So, if you aren't getting off at my stop, then you must be headed to Scarlet Hollow, right? Or the holler, as they say, I call it in these parts. That's the only other stop until this bus turns around. I ride it pretty often, so I'd know. Almost nobody ever goes up that way. Though, come to think of it, I had a couple of buddies who went up there to work in the mines. There's a coal mine up there. You see, there's always a job listing or two on the boards around here. I've never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are. But my buddies got desperate enough to try it. I haven't heard from them in a while now that I think about it. I should see if they're on Facebook. Oh uh, yeah, Facebook's a thing. I could use Facebook for 
forever. See how they're doing up there. Hope they didn't die. He looks back at his phone for once, focused on something other than you. Oh, this is me. It was lovely meeting you. Hope you don't get too bored without me. Here, I have something for you. I... The stranger rifles through his bag before presenting you with a dripping bag of peanuts. I don't... I don't think I want that. I'm pretty sure I don't want that. They're boiled peanuts. I got them at a gas station a few buses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figured you could use them more, more than me. I don't want your peanuts, man. I don't even like peanuts. <laughs> I don't want them. <laughs> Plus, they dripped all over my bag, so I don't want to carry them anymore. Tip, sometimes packing a dialogue option establish new facts about who you are. Oh. Picking a dialogue option. Okay. Yeah, um... <laughs> Screw you and screw your peanuts. I, 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 no, no thank you. Put up your hands and say no. I'm not really hungry. I also don't want your peanuts. There's still a good 45 minutes left in your journey, pal. Assuming nothing goes wrong, best to have them on hand. The young man sets the peanuts down on the empty seat next to him. The juices dribble out to, through the bottom of the bag and into the uh, upholstery. Oh no, I hope nobody sits in that seat now. They're gonna get peanut butt. Instantly soaking it in peanut brine. And with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. A lovely bag of peanuts just right there. And just like that, you're alone. The stranger puts soaking, uh, da, 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 da. The stranger's peanuts soaking into the seat across from you. <laughs> Maybe you can finally go get some sleep. Hopefully. <laughs> Next stop, Scarlet Hollow. End of the line. Almost there. Hmm. That was a quick 45 minutes. <laughs> the bus finally comes to a stop. It breaks squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. The sign at the least, least reads bus station but calling it that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though for a small town like this, you're amazed there's so much as a road, let alone a bus that drives on it every week. The driver quickly shuts the door behind you and starts the engine, kicking up dust clouds as he pulls away, eager to leave you at this place behind. Hello? You know me, so I know you. You insistently recognize, instantly recognize the worn young woman from the few public photos on her Facebook page. She's your cousin, Tabitha. And she looks annoyed to be here. Mm. I don't think she wants a hug, but that's the response I want to say. It's like somebody needs a hug. <laughs> I'm so sorry for your loss. Come here, cuz. Bring it in. <laughs> you go in for a hug. She tries to pull away, but it's too late. You squeeze tightly, your cousin squirming in your grip. Okay, okay. Did she hit me? I'd hit me too. <laughs> she pulls away from you, dis dusting off her clothes. Something you should know about me is that I'm not really a hugger. It's never too late to learn. <laughs> It's never too late to- No. I don't want to be annoying, but I want to be annoying. <laughs> it is. Respect my boundaries and we won't have any trouble, okay? Now come on. Let's go. I don't want to spend any more time down here than I have to. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked near the bus kiosk. You follow her clambering into the dusty relic. Lovely, lovely, lovely. It doesn't take much driving before the only signs of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as her focus on the road. 
Dialogue options labeled explore can usually be taken without advance in the story. They can impact the relationship and unlock additional story paths, so choose carefully. Okay, okay. So I don't have to explore everything. That is a terrible thing. Do not say that. <laughs> huh. I could just remain silent. I guess I'll ask how you're holding up. How you holding up? Fine. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if it'd be smart to say, she, she obviously doesn't want to talk about it. Yeah, okay, okay. But if that ever changes, I'm here for you, right? Even after I go home, sure. I guess we'll talk about the funeral, so the it's on Sunday, right? Like I told you. Have you worked out all the details? Hmm. Taken care of, don't need any help. Okay. This is awkward small talk. This is the small talk that nobody wants in the car. <laughs> I can't believe we never actually met before this. You have your mom to thank for that. Or had, I guess. Is there bad blood between us? <sighs> oh, yeah. You know, I guess I could bring up her dead mom now since she said something about my dead mom. Is there bad blood between us? Sorry, but is there bad blood between us? All I know is my mom left and she was mad at the side of the family, but I don't know much besides that. Your cousin stares straight ahead. Her expression, icy. So, uh, that, that dead mobs club, how we feeling about that? I guess we're both members of the dead mobs club now. Your cousin turns to stare at you, icy hatred in her eyes. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. You talked about my dead mom. <sighs> she turns back on to the road, her expression cold and unforgiving. You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as the car eases up the steep mountain road. Sorry, Tabitha. My bad. Why would you live on a cliff like that? Why would you trust a cliff like that? And here it is, the Scarlet Estate. Though it's seen better days, its crumbling elegance is not lost on you. Someone used... Uh, used to cram to apartments in gray cities. Reading is just not going to work out today, but we're going to try anyways. <laughs> Your mother told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an angry burning beneath her words. The faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you. A jarring blend of opulence and ruin. As you stare at it perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something that should have been left to rot long, long time ago. You're hit with a blast of dusty air as you step across the threshold into the foyer. Everything in this room has been here for much longer than you've been alive. Each object cemented in place with a layer of dust and cobwebs. You can hear doors creaking on on their hinges and the ache and moan that that was good timing <laughs> of an ancient floorboard as the house itself was swaying in the wind welcome to our family's humble estate unfortunately due to the current state of the house only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay i wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs the floors have been known to give out. If you know what's good for you, you'll stick to your room, your bathroom, and the kitchen. And the hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get those places. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. 
You can leave your bag here for the time being. What kind of person are you, Tabitha? What kind of person are you? <laughs> Lie. Oh, the architecture reminds me of the Baltimore estate. The, uh, nope. I should have never picked street smarts. Those words are too big for me. Reminis <laughs> the Baltimore estate. Color me marginally impressed. I didn't, uh, I didn't have pegged you as cultured. Yes, I definitely am cultured. <laughs> Believe it or not, this estate actually predates the Baltimore by nearly three decades. It used to be the crown jewel of the region, but times change, and the atten attention of the masses are ever so fickle. Shall we begin the tour? Yeah. Yeah. Shall be around. You, you put your bag down and follow Tabitha through a long, dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor, and you do your best to trace her steps. Kitchen. On Wednesdays, a woman from the town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name is Janny. I wouldn't recommend socializing with her. She'll take talk your ear off. If you need any food, there's fixings for peanut butter and jelly. I love a good peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a good PB and J. What kind of jelly is it? That's very important to me. What kind of jelly is it? Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. What kind of ice cream are we talking? <laughs> oh, and you can also access the garden through here, but it's pretty wild, so I wouldn't if I were you. Some explore options prevent you from talk uh, taking others. Choose carefully. Okay. Okay. Okay, someone cleans the place. You said someone actually cleans this place. That, that's just a longer version of this. Ah, mm, I, I, mm -hmm. These are these are options that we could definitely Don't don't take her ice cream. Don't take her ice cream. Okay, I could just I could I could just uh, tell you I could I, I love PG and J. Awesome. Fantastic. How'd you know it was my favorite? <laughs> that smile can't be real. I didn't, but good for you. I'm sorry, Tabitha. <sighs> now I'll go ahead and lie. I, I do like the kitchen. Just needs a little fixing up. Fix the window right there, fix the uh, cupboard. It's a nice kitchen. Is that a kitchen island? I don't have one of those currently. It is. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Uh, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. All right. What's next on the tour? Bathroom, follow me. Great. I've been, it's been hours since I've got, hours. Ooh, I don't know if I'd be able to do the, I pee like nobody's business. <laughs> As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on the countertop. Mm, is that your cat? What's its name? F is that Fru Fru or Frau Frau? Fru Fru? Do not try to pet her. If she wants to be pet, she'll let you know. All right, then we'll leave the cat be. No sense in trying to pet that cat. Shall we move on? The bathroom's away. I would love to see where the bathroom is and then also have you step outside so I can use it. You once again follow Tabitha through the long, dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights, it'll get easier to navigate these spaces. But for the time being, you feel lucky to not have fallen through the floors. Guest bathroom. Not much to show. It's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must, if you must. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm taking note of uh, this lovely establishment and um, what we have to offer. Is that, is that is that hair dye? Do you dye your hair? Looks like hair dye. 
Um, it's a wretched bathroom. <laughs> Piles of junk sitting untouched in the corners mm -hmm. of the room. And mystery stains paint the floor. Mm. Mm hmm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, uh, Ooh. What a wonderful bathroom. Absolutely love it. I've always wanted one of those bathtubs with the little feet on it. Oh, that is kind of cute. I do like the feet on the bathtub. <laughs> Glad you like it. The bathtub is extremely valuable, uh, an extremely valuable antique. Does it fit a whole person? Because that's an issue with bathtubs. A lot of them just don't fit a whole person. Okay, okay, we're, we're gonna try. Flip the toilet seat. Oh. Uh, mm, mm hmm. Mm. Tasty. <laughs> the bugs skitter from the bowl as you lift the seat. We gotta use the facility. We have to go. <laughs> hover, hover over it. A toilet is a toilet. Sure, it could be cleaner, but your business needs doing, and this is a good place as any. You do what you must and rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Next up, guest bedroom. Last stop on the tour, follow me. Hopefully it's as lovely as the rest of our establishments that we have seen, the kitchen and the bathroom. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. This is nice. This is nice. I like this. This is good. The room smells old. Dust, mildew, and wood rot is all it has. A week of sleeping in this place might give you permanent lung damage. I already can't breathe. I have asthma. <laughs> this is where you'll be staying. The linens are fresh. I had Janie wash them last week. I had to endure a half hour rant about her kid to get her to do it, so you better be grateful. The closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hang your clothes up. But you can use the dresser. It should be empty. Okay. We will continue with our, our beautiful lies, because we're trying to make her feel good about her place. This is incredible. How do you know how much... Uh, da, da, da. How, how do you know how much I love... Da, That's just a really hard sentence for me to say. How do you know, how do you know how much I love cherubs? That chest is to die for, I, what chest? Once more you surprised me with your discerning taste. Every last piece of furniture in this room is genuine antique handed down through the family of generations. Okay. So I guess I'll start to get settled. Follow me, I'll take you back to the forest so you can collect your belongings. Flattery will get you everywhere. This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties, so you'll have to entertain yourself the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Mm. Some dialogue options will open additionally conversation path additional conversation paths. Some right away, and others down the line. Okay. I would love to see a library. Is there a library here? Is there a library in this state? I couldn't bring too many books with me, and I'm not sure what else I should do with my time. There is, but as I said earlier, most of the building is off limits. And the library is in the West Wing, which is extra off limits. You better head off into town. I'm pretty sure they have a library there. Okay, okay. Mm. Well, what am I supposed to do while you're gone? This is a very demanding job I should be getting back to right now. That doesn't include figuring out activities for your, you to occupy your time with. I'm not your babysitter. Why don't you, I don't know, go walk in the town? Okay, okay. There's a historic building, buildings to look at, and I'm sure you'll have a great time. 
Okay, okay, okay. Are you sure you did, did, did I do something wrong? Why are you being such a jerk to me? Are you sure you're okay? Are you sure you're okay? That face is not a face of somebody who is okay. You seem kind of upset. I mean, I think anybody would be upset if their mom just died. I'm fine, I just need to get back to work. Okay, okay. I won't keep you. But we should hang out when you get back. It'd be nice, you'd like it. I'm a fantastic person to be around. We'll see. There's a lot that needs to get done this week. Bye. Your cousin leaves through the front door. And now it's just you. You and the sprawling, decrepit estate. PB and J settle into your room and go straight to the for go straight to the forbidden wing of the estate. We'll hold off on that. We'll hold off. <laughs> uh, let's go get a PB and J. We haven't eaten all day because we refuse to eat the peanuts. The only things louder than your stomach right now are the creaks and moans in the ancient place. A PB and J sounds exactly like what you need to take the rest of the on the rest of the day. You head to the kitchen. <laughs> You're back in the kitchen, ready to craft a beautiful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's a daunting task given the state of the place, but the aggressive growls from your stomach outweigh your fear of food poisoning. To get started, you'll probably need to find some peanut butter, some jelly, bread, a plate, and a knife. The makings of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Uh, ba, ba, ba. oh, I guess I could go check out the gardens. Let's uh, search the cabinets first. Any jelly in here? The cabinets must be where Tabitha keeps the dishware and oddly enough, the utensils. You know what? That's fine. There's a note right there. I'm curious about it. Examine the shot glass, examine the mug, grab the bowl. Grab a plate. A knife, that's exactly what we were looking for. All you need now is some actual food. I would like to examine the mug. I was just curious about it. It reads, I was blown away at Boiling Rock, NC. So your aunt and cousin actually traveled sometime? Even if it was only for a few hours from the estate, Maybe you can route your return trip through the Boiling Rock. It might be nice to see the local sites before heading home. Okay. Grab the bowl. Ah, moth trap. Do not touch. Got it. You should put that back immediately. You reach for the bowl, but as you pull it down, a blend of vinegar and dead moth splashes onto you, immediately staining your shirt. On the back of the bowl is a note that reads, Moth trap, do not touch. Whoops. Your shirt is now unpleasantly wet. You'll probably change into something clean before leaving the house. Remember that. Remember that. Remember that. We need to change before we leave, which means we need to go to the room before we leave. Uh, yeah, let's examine the shot glass. Might as well. It reads, I survived Deb's 50th. Your aunt's name was Per... Per Perlan? Perlene? Perlene. Perlene. So this wasn't from her 50th. From the few stories you've heard from your mom, Perlene wasn't the type to have Kit, Kit, Kitsy? Kit, 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 I'm afraid. Friends who gave out themed shot glasses from their birthday parties. From the few stories you've heard from your mom, Perlene wasn't the type to have, oh, I just read that. Close the cabinet. <laughs> All right, close the cabinet, look at the rest. We should probably search the fridge. That's definitely where we're gonna find the jelly. As you approach the fridge, your eyes catch a note taped to the door reading, Janie, stay out, in all caps. Below it, in a separate handwriting, are the words, okie dokie. <laughs> that is so much jelly. And that is a lot of, do you think she'd notice if I took one of her ice creams? I'm just saying, that's a lot of ice cream. Do you think she'd notice if I took some? Ice cream is my favorite. What? 
It is banana and chocolate, though. I don't really care for chocolate. So maybe not. Maybe it's fine. You open the fridge. Why do we open the freezer while we open the fridge? Never mind. Doesn't matter. You already feel a deep urge to wash your hands, even though you have yet to touch anything other than the handle. There's also mayonnaise. <sighs> the takeout's not mine. The ice cream's definitely not mine, as she warned me not to take it. Let me take the jelly. Lucy's jelly. You reach for one of the unopened jars of grape jelly, carefully checking its expiration date. You breathe a sigh of relief when you realize it's recent. I was hoping it'd be strawberry jelly, but you know, that's fine. Grape jelly's fine too, I guess. This was either purchased specifically for you, or jelly is one of the few things in this kitchen Tabitha actually uses. All you needed, uh, all you need now is some bread and peanut butter. Better close this fridge and keep looking. All right, I, I'm good. I'm not trying to get on her bad side and take her food. You return to the kitchen, closing the fridge behind you. Ooh, I've already looked in the pantry. No, I've looked in the cabinet. I haven't looked in the pantry. Pantry, peanut butter, tons of bread, and she said, do not take her mac and cheese. She sure loves her mac and cheese. <laughs> Okay, take bread. You pick up one of the non-moldy loaves of bread, grape. One step closer to a satisfying snack. All you need now is some peanut butter. Take other peanut butter. The king of nut butters. And only 3% of the jar is mashed up co- Oh no, mm 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 Nope, don't like that. Don't like that at all. This is the last ingredient you need to make your PB&J. Time to get to work. Close that pantry. Now, I have to approach the cat, even if the cat doesn't want anything to do with me. And the cat hisses at you as you draw near, but remains firmly in place. This is clearly for Foo Spot on the counter. All right, we'll back away. She doesn't love us yet. She just doesn't know how great of a person we are yet. She'll love us in the end. <laughs> All right, make that PB and J. Despite the state of the horrendous kitchen, you have successfully combined your three ingredients to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Congratulations. You can feed yourself. Look at that beautiful sandwich right there. All of the hassle, and it took you less than a minute to eat. The rest of the day lies in front of you. Uh, I kind of want to look at the gardens. This garden was reclaimed by the wilderness long ago. It might not be safe, but who's to stop you from venturing deeper? Uh, I want to explore. Just a little bit, just a little bit. You wander further into the garden. It's quiet out here. Nice. This is a very nice garden. And honestly, it doesn't look that overgrown. Does not look that bad in there. You head back inside and close the door behind you. All right, we're done here. Congratulations. You've eaten and have a full day ahead of you. What do you want to do next? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. We need to go to our room because we need to change our shirt. We got moth juice all over us. Now that you've finally eaten, the aches and pains of your journey have started to sink deep into your bones. You stumble up the stairs to your room, suitcase and toe, eager to unwind before you face the rest of the day. You stand at the entrance of your room. Take a nap. Damn, I want to take it. You know, no. Hold on. I would like to change if that's an option. Put your spare clothes in the dresser. Check the closet. Examine the painting on the wall. Uh, we'll start with the painting. This must be an old relative of yours. Judging by the dates on the inscription, you've never heard of her, but you'd barely heard anything about your aunt and cousins until a week ago. 
So that's not really a surprise. Maybe you could ask Tabitha about this Mary Bell Scarlet the next time you see her. That is, if she actually is in the mood for a conversation. Okay. Let's look out the window, see what we see. That's the garden from before. Love it. You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must have been in its heyday. If you owned this place, you'd totally get out there with a shovel and some gardening gloves and whip it into shape. And promptly kill every single thing in the garden because I can't grow anything to save my life. You'd go out and pull weeds, chop trees, carve... The trees, and do whatever you need to do to return it to its former glory. And once it's all done, you'd sit by the fountain, which of course you would have a little goldfish in it. Can goldfish live in fountains? And drink floral tea while enjoying a bird song. Yeah, you definitely do that. Just not right now. It's also not your place to do that. Check the closet. There's a doll in the closet. You can see why your cousin said you should put your clothes in the dresser instead of this closet. There must be decades of family history stacked up in here. Yeah, I'll go ahead and pick up the doll. I'm curious. Of course, you're sharing a room with a creepy doll. You pick it up and examine it more closely. If Foots reads, property of Alexandra, no need to carry this around with you. You close the closet behind you. Let's put our clothes in the dresser. We have a roommate! I'm gonna name you Gus. You drag your suitcase over the dresser and open the bottom drawer. A possum lurks within it. It's quiet, but angry. Mm. <laughs> Gently smack the one. No, that is terrible, no. Oh, pardon me. You gently close the door, leaving the marsupial in peace. This drawer belongs to the opossum. And there's nothing you can do about that. You open the top drawer next. It's empty. As good a place as any for your clothes. Based on the state of the house, you wonder if you'd have a better, uh, been better off keeping your clothes in your nice, clean bag. But there's no going back now. Mm. Yeah, I'll take a nap. A nap sounds nice. You immediately collapse onto your bed. You're tired enough that being alone in a strange new place won't stop you from passing out. Or so you thought. You cough as a small cloud of dust rises from the mattress. These sheets must might be fresh, but everything beneath them might have been around to see the dawn of civilization. <laughs> you try to settle in, but the bed is lumpy in strange places, and you can feel the springs pressing through the fabric. You might be tired, but... You're far from tired enough to get in more than a few minutes of uncomfortable napping. We'll have to sleep on that eventually. It doesn't seem like there's much else for you to do here right now. Alright. Let us head to town then. Now that you're settled in, there's not much left for you to do here other than head out and explore the town. You do just that. Before leaving the house, you rinse off and change your, into a clean shirt. You're not about to new, meet new people coated in vinegar and uh, dead moths. Would be a terrible idea. If you'd have known you'd wind up here having to walk all the way back to town, you probably would have just asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop, especially with how unhappy she seemed to see you. If only you could wipe the slate between the two of you clean and bury some of the tension. Though maybe her mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. Probably not, but that doesn't mean we can't try. Then again, maybe it's the perfect time. Continue down the path. Keep on going. It's really pretty out here. We do like our nature. Look at the mountains. Continue down the path. Finally, you made it back to town. The hauler, as that guy on the bus called it, has probably seen better days. It still is the feeling of an idyllic country town, but its sidewalks are cracked and many of the storefronts are boarded up. The window's dusty with age. Oh, but it looks like a cute little town. A chill breeze 
sweeps down the lane. And you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're peering into a grave. Oh, hello! It's a bubbo! <laughs> Sorry about that. Gretchen can be very slippery when she wants to pee. She loves to get loose and cause havoc. I love that dog now. Pug, she's so cute. I love pugs. <laughs> she's so cute. Thanks, she is cute. Sure, most of her teeth have fallen out, and she's got a couple of weird growths, but for a 17-year-old pug, that's pretty good. That's not bad at all. That's amazing. The fact that she's still alive. That's amazing. That's fantastic, actually. That's incredible. It sure is. I'm hoping she beats the current record holder and makes it to 19. Or better yet, 20. The more time we get together, the better. Isn't that right, Gretchen? Ah, but what am I doing? I got so caught up in the excitement of meeting someone new that I entirely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Stella. Hello, Stella. It's not often I see a strange face up in the holler. Every now and then, there's a new crop of whole folks, but you don't look dusty enough for that. You aren't in town for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet funeral? I wouldn't be caught. Ah, well, as much as I would like to lie, I don't want to get caught in that lie later. Might as well introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Lily. You must be Tabby's cousin, right? That's the only person I can think of who would come to town for the funeral. How's she holding up? To be honest, I've been a little worried about her, all alone up in that big house. I'm sorry, did you say Tabby? Hmm. She's alright, even though we just met a couple hours ago. I'd be lying if I said she was, uh, wasn't worried about her. Yeah. Yeah, no, I am... I am worried about her. She's always been a little rough around the edges, but I figure she'd probably be having a rough go of things. She and her mom are really close. To think she's been up in that old mansion all by herself. It'll probably be good for her now that you're staying there, even if she doesn't think so herself. Mm. How long have you known her? Oh, quite a long time. The town's really small, so everybody knows everybody else as far back as they can remember. Tabby and I got a little close when we were both in school production, uh, school's production of A Midsummer's Night Dream. I was Puck and she was... This mustard seed. I don't know why I'm struggling so hard to read today. <laughs> As you might have expected, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. But then she graduated and that was it. Oh, and if you just got to town, you must be starving. I was just on my way to the diner for a coffee and they've got amazing biscuits. My treat. Sure, I'm not exactly starving, but I'm always down to eat more food. Besides, there's so many people here. Look, the pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast foods hang, hangs heavy in the air. It contrasts with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate. The diner is filled with comforting den of human life. Mm. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve people that I could see. And it looks like those are our cool workers. Maybe. Oh. Oh, they, they all stop talking. I didn't realize. All of which grinds to a sudden halt as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. I'm going to quietly slide to the nearest booth. You slide into the nearest booth pretending that you didn't notice everyone in the diner <laughs> gawking at you like you just, they just seen Bigfoot. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. 
definitely not weird at all. No need to be so shy. They don't meet many strangers. It's kind of a big deal when someone new wanders into town. Especially since, well, they probably all know what you're here for. And by extension, who you're related to. Even if you don't know anybody, it's not easy keeping secrets in a town this size. And that's why I didn't lie earlier. Hey, Stella. I went ahead and fixed up your coffee. They gratefully place a cup of specially brewed coffee in front of Stella. Avery. Oh, shit. Shucks. Thanks, Avery. And here's some bacon for the little lady. Oh. Gretchen sniffs the bacon and digs in. You can hit the H button on your keyboard to hide the text box anytime. I love that. Eat that bacon. Eat that bacon, little lady. Anything for you? Nope. She's 17. She can have as much bacon as she wants to have. I don't care if bacon's bad for dogs. I will order a coffee because I already ate something and I don't need to eat more. Just a coffee, thanks. No problem. Avery pours the fragrant brew into an empty mug in front of you. They linger after pouring your coffee, turning to you nervously. Oh, and, um, sorry for your loss. Oh, that that's sweet. But I don't really know the person, so it's not hitting me too hard. Before you have the chance to respond, they're gone. Should have gone for the biscuit. They're really good. But I guess you've got all week. Maybe you'll get one tomorrow. Anyways, the funeral's not to Sunday, right? That gives you quite a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this week. There's always the reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids, but I do it every month anyway. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Avery's throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. And there's the weekly Sunday potluck. That should be right after the funeral, so it'll be a special occasion. Hmm. Let's see. What to pick, what to pick, what to pick. It's the potluck like a church thing. Potlucks are kind of... They, potlucks just give me a churchy vibe. Uh, da, 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 da. Book smarts, sure. I'm sorry, did you say reading adventure? I'm just... I like libraries. Oscar is all about keeping things on theme, so this month's a bunch of ghost stories. I think he's calling it spooky book, <laughs> spooky bookies. You know, like how ghosts would say it. Mm. Oh no, it's de it is bookies, bookies. <laughs> oh my god, that's yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love a good I love a good book pun. I love a good pun in general. Absolutely perfect. Cool, we should go check it out this week. But. That's really just an afternoon. Any idea what you want to do for the rest of the week? Hmm. Ba -ba 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 -ba. No clue. No clue. I'm sure I'll be able to occupy myself. Just do what I can to support Tabitha. Mm. Yeah. I do kind of want to support Tabitha. It's a hard time. I kind of assumed I'd be spending my time trying to help Tabitha, but with how quickly she ran off today, I'm not sure that's enough for a full schedule. It's really sweet of you, but you're right. That's definitely still, that'll definitely still leave you with plenty of time to kill. Have you thought about exploring the local trails at all? I'm usually out there a few nights a week for my job. What job do you do out there? Before Stella can finish, Avery returns biscuit in tow. Hey Winnie, wanted to give you a biscuit on the house. She sends her condolences. I get a biscuit anyways? Oh. Oh. 
didn't have to do that. That's so sweet. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. It looks great. No worries. I hope you enjoy it. You pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy. It's nearly crumbles that your touch of buttery warmth emanates from its surface. You take a bite, it melts in your mouth as if it was nothing but butter suspended in a thin mixture of dough. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. A little bit of honey on that biscuit would just be so nice. Just a little bit of honey. Why? I've had better. Why would you lie about this? This is the best biscuit I've ever had. But that's not saying much. Now, we'll, we'll stick with this one. Whoa. This is a really good biscuit. Wow. <laughs> I'm so glad you like it. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. So, uh... Has Stella mentioned she's famous? You're famous? Look, if you're not gonna go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm gonna do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. Ah. So am I. <laughs> Not famous, though. <laughs> ah, wow, that's rad. I've never met a YouTuber before. I'd love to check out your channel at some point. Wow, oh, thanks. It's nothing much. It pays the bills, but it's mostly a passion project, you know? She's selling herself short, Lily. Her stuff is amazing. She hunts cryptids. Ooh, I like a good cryptid, Del. Wait. How do you know my name? I'm gonna let it go. It's a small town, it's a small town. I'm gonna let that one go, I'm gonna let that one slide. You choose to ignore Avery mentioning your name before you'd even introduced. It's a small town, we're probably gets around. I think the best video to start with would be the river one. Not the lake, but you know, the controversial one. Oh yeah. The Katow... The Kat... Katawa... Katawa... Kat... Katawaba... Katawa... <laughs> River Runner. I didn't expect much out of that footage at the time, but it wound up being my most popular video by far. So the River Runner is a cryptid that only known for a single sighting. Two Boy Scouts thought they saw something big and weird. And that's all I had to go on. But then I wound up catching this on camera. Stella puts on her, out her ba, 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 ba. Stella pulls out her phone and shows you a clip of something in a river. The size and shape of the creature's body tells you it's likely a predator, and it's definitely not a wolf. You see, uh, you seem to recall the mountain lions used to live up here. Who's to stay if there aren't a few left? Some folks said it was a beaver, but. That's, uh, if that was the case, it'd be at least twice the size of any beaver I've seen. I also had people saying it was a dog or even a capybara. That must have escaped from a local wildlife sanctuary. I'm still not sure what it is, and I'm not the only one who saw the thing with my own two eyes. No, she is the only one who saw the thing. Sorry, maybe it's a mountain lion. No, get your book smarts out of here. I don't believe in cryptids. <laughs> totally a dog or wait, a beaver. Hold on. That's an honest to God cryptid there. Mm -hmm. No way that's a beaver or a dog. And there's no way a capybara would be swimming in a river in the mountains of the North Carolina. Unless there's some North American colonial colony of capybaras in the apple. Words just aren't wording. No. Avalanche. But that would still count as a cryptid, wouldn't it? Yeah, until someone catches a capybara up here. That would still count as a cryptid by most standards. My comment section went nuts for this footage. And from there, it spread to Twitter pretty fast. There were polls for days. I even had an actual expert weighing in. It was all really cool experience. 
and it meant the video did some pretty great numbers. Personally, I'm a fan of the capybara theory. Sure, it's not like any local sanctuaries were missing one. But there's always people keeping exotic animal pets. Kind of a sewer gator type situation. Exactly. Some exotic pet owner set it free and now it will forever roam the Kadawa. Not gonna ever say that right, but I'm gonna start saying it that way, confusing Boy Scouts and YouTube commenters for years to come. So speaking of things to do around town, I was actually planning on filming this week's video tonight. I was wondering if maybe you wanted to come along. You're a stranger to me. I don't know if I want to do that. It's a pretty easy one this week. We wouldn't even have to camp anywhere. I'm gonna go after the... Wait, no spoilers. Oh, sorry, Avery. It's okay, I should probably get back to it instead of standing around chatting with friends. See you around. Now that the coast is clear, give me the details. Tell me what we're looking for. After a skunk ape. Doesn't skunk ape live in Florida? You stinky. You stinky. Don't they live in Florida? Doesn't skunk ape live in Florida? Oh, you know your stuff, don't you? I knew you'd make a great partner. It mostly lives in Florida, but there have been sightings as far as north and uh, as far north as Virginia. While I was doing research for last week's video, I came across a reporter. A report where a lady from a town over claimed to have seen one on her deck playing tug of war with her dog. I'm sorry. What happened there? Did you see that? Did I? Was that just me? Did I see that? I saw something I didn't like. And as I leave, no stone unturned, I decide it was worth the investigation. Alright. Yep, sure. I'm happy to come. Hold the camera for me. Well, I don't know if you wanted me to hold the camera. I do not have steady hands. Uh, will Gretchen be there? Against my better, better judgment, yes. That depends. Will Gretchen be there? Of course, it's actually been a while since I've had anyone but Gretchen out there with me. Say no more. I am absolutely and totally in. This is gonna be a lot of fun. I actually started the channel with a couple of buddies of mine back in the middle school. So it'll kind of be like a blast from the past. Me and Kanika and Reese running around in the woods, flipping over rocks and bothering salamanders. Our videos were terrible, but we had a lot of fun and that's all that really matters. You know, that gets me thinking. I wonder if they'd be down to come along with us, get the old gang back together. Though I guess Kanika has to close out the general store tonight, so I'm pretty sure she's a no-go. But Reese, I think there's a decent chance we could get him to come up out of his hidey hole if, it's, uh, if he's up for it. Do you mind if I make a quick call? So, you didn't even give me a chance to answer that. <laughs> sure, go ahead. I don't mind. Stella pulls out her phone and, di uh, and it dials. Waiting for the ring. Reese! Dude, what's up? Feels like it's been forever. Aw oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come by, or...? Okay, if you're really sure. But if you change your mind... Oh, I was just calling to ask if you wanted to come out to the woods tonight. I met somebody cool in town today. She's Tabitha's cousin. I know. Yeah, just for the week. Anyways, we're going out to look for the skunk ape. We could take the easier trails if that would help. Did he hurt his ankle? His foot? His leg? Something that would make it hard to walk for him. Dang, man, that sounds awful. I hope you take it easy tonight. I'll swing by some, uh, sometime this week and we can have a more low-key hang. How's that? Mm, yeah, I'll bring her. Talk to you soon, bud. Looks like it's just you and me, pal. Right, we can't assume. 
Are you okay? Everything good over there? You okay, Stella? Hmm, yeah, I'm fine. I'm more worried about Reese. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, that would have been a very selfish thing to explore. No, he wants her to bring Gretchen. I'm glad I didn't ask. I know for a fact it would have been Gretchen. He's had a lot going on in the past, gosh, 10 years or so, so. But I feel like it's gotten a lot worse recently. I can't remember the last time I saw him leave his house. Oh, well. It's not my place to talk about. I just got a little excited thinking about having him along again. He's hilarious. You'd love him. We should swing by his place sometime this week. That'd be nice. I'd like that. I'd love to meet your friends. Awesome. I'll make it happen. He's definitely the trickier one to meet. Kanika is much easier to track down since she's at the general store. Basically every day. But friendship can wait. We've got a skunk ape to hunt. So we should probably head out if we want to make it up to the mountains before it's too dark. Ah, come on. Let's blow this popsicle stand. Oh, you sound old and I love it. <laughs> You pause before getting up. Maybe it's time to make a good first impression. Mm. All right. I'm a big believer in leaving a, a generous tip. As my philosophy is, if they did their job properly, then you leave them a, a good tip. If they did their job excellently, then you leave them a great tip. You reach into your pocket and pull out a crumpled $5 bill. You know, it's a bit more than one would expect to get from such a short dining experience, but you might as well share the wealth while you got it. You smooth out the bill before placing it on the table and conspicuously. Oh, that's awesome of you. Avery will appreciate that, I'm sure. Stella turns to leave the diner with you falling close behind. Bye-bye. All right, up to the mountain. That... Hold on, hold on. Let me... Look at how dangerous that is. Look at how dangerous that house is. That is dangerous up there. It hadn't been very cold when you first arrived in town, but as the sun dips closer and closer to the horizon, a chill s descends upon the hollow. As you see your situation with renewed clarity, you're in a new place, far from civilization, and the people you know following someone you just met into a dark forest in search of monsters. You feel... strangely calm. The setting sun paints beautiful colors in the sky, fresh air fills your lungs, and a pleasant song of crickets trill around you as night descends. This is where you, uh, this is where you're supposed to be with Stella by your side, a sweet smile on her face, and Gretchen pl plodding along in front without a care in the world. Gotta love this brisk fall weather. This past summer was the hottest on record since last year at least. You know how it is these days, each summer is the hottest yet until the next summer, which always finds a way to be so much worse. It's just nice to feel a chill in the air and see the leaves change. Like normal, uh, like normalcy is restored if only for a moment. Sorry if this was a bit of a bummer. We should talk about something more fun, like skunk apes. Uh, are you really expecting to find anything? D -d -d Do you ever hunt things that aren't cryptids, like ghosts or whatnot? I mean, that'd be interesting. I'm curious about that. You know, like ghosts, demons, werewolves, that sort of thing? Yeah, for sure. I used to go after all sorts of spooky stuff. I never had much luck though, especially when it came to ghosts. Back when I first started doing solo videos, I'd go into all sorts of old abandoned buildings, hoping I'd stumble across some sort of activity. But nothing ever happened. It was always just me and my camera in an old house getting worked up over a gust of wind or a creaky floorboard. When all's said and done, I've just been a lot luckier with cryptids. I want to believe in ghosts so bad, 
And I can't rule out the possibility that there are true hauntings out there, but if there are, I sure as heck haven't seen any myself. Werewolves, I kind of lump in with cryptids. I'd be shocked if there's actually uh, if there actually were people out there who turned into animals. But werewolf lore lines up pretty well with the great beast genre of cryptids. As for demons, I don't know. I honestly don't even want to consider the possibility possibility that they exist. Because if they really are out there, geez, a lot of folks are doomed to an eternity of flames. So let's hope all of that junk, uh, all of that just bunks, am I right? What about aliens? What do you think about aliens? Do you even, don't even get me started. Did you see the UFO video? So the government declassified aliens are definitely real and they have absolutely visited earth like i believe in aliens way more than i believe in cryptids <laughs> you don't see me hunting aliens out here because we know they're real okay okay see that's just what the government wants you to think I have absolutely no opinions on aliens. Heck yes, aliens are real. Nice. I knew we had a connection. I'm building a relationship. I'm doing the socializing properly. Okay. Keep going. I know somebody who knows somebody who heard a... St I know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows another person who knows a dog of a cousin. Who heard a story from this trucker in Fadeville? His truck stopped in the middle of the road, just shut down completely, even though he had a full tank of gas. And suddenly it looked like daylight outside. He could see cows out in the field, birds in the sky. Then this metallic, like, egg thing appeared, floating in front of his truck. He passed out, and when he woke up, he was missing one of his pinky- Oh, ow, ew, no, gross. It was like it had never even been there. It was just smooth skin, where the pinky should be. I know it's a second-hand source, but there's plenty more like that. And if they are true? Maybe it was just sleep paralysis. Could have been the government. I'm convinced. Makes sense to me. For sure. And even if it's, if this one's hogwash, there's a lot of evidence out there. Uh, ba, ba, ba. What's the weirdest thing you see? Uh, what's, what's the weirdest thing you've seen out here besides the cryptids? Oh gosh, that's a uh, that's a good one. Mm, let me think. Well, there's always the deer I saw stealing baby birds out of a nest and eating them. That was pretty messed up. But I think most people know about that these days. I've seen tons of videos of other deer doing it, so I'm not sure if it counts as weird anymore. Oh, and... Tantanus. <laughs> like, that's definitely the weirdest. It's a five foot deep, 30 foot wide pile of old cans and bottles of assorted garbage with grass and trees growing on it. So you could barely tell it was there until you stepped on it. I was practically, uh, it, it was practically solid ground with how much it had been compressed, but you could still fall through if you weren't careful, hence the name. Better be uh, on your shots if you want to mess around in there. It's all stuff from the 50s too, which is super neat. I salvaged a few bottles and I kept, uh, that I kept on my dresser as a little souvenir. Okay. Has anything bad ever happened on these hikes? Just curious. Hmm. Let me think. There was that time back in early high school when Reese fell down a cliff. But he was fine. We had some folks from town Rigapuli to get him out of the ravine. And his leg only took a couple of months to heal. Not too bad. Though I guess there was also that time I was out here alone and kinda got stuck in a cave. 
I was getting great footage out uh, of what I thought was a family of wumpus cats. But I wasn't able to wiggle my way back out. Turns out the wumpus cats were actually skunks who very much did not appreciate me blocking the entrance to their hidey hole. And instead of running for help, Wretched just sat outside, bored to tears. Lassie, she is not. I took, it took about an hour to get loose, which was pretty intense, but a few tomato juice baths later and I was right as rain. So it could have been a lot worse. Oh, and there was this time I accidentally stumbled onto an old Duke's property. Oh, stumbled onto old Duke's property and nearly got my head shot off. Got it, do not go to old Duke's property. You will be trespassing and he can't shoot. But that happens to everybody sooner or later. I barely count it. So yeah, these hikes aren't all that dangerous, all things considered. Are you sure it's safe? I think we're good to get moving. I think we're good to go. Did you hear that? Is that you, old Duke? Oh, calm down, Gretchen, you old mutt. Same to you, Stella. You're always jumping at nothing, girl. Oh, sorry for getting spooked, Duke. I thought you were a skunk ape. <laughs> Some creature of darkness, not really. Just old Duke. Now what the hell are you looking for way out here? Skunk ape. Sorry, I asked. <laughs> um, some tells me he, uh, he doesn't believe in cryptids. And who's this you've suckered into coming with you? Wait a tick. You aren't... Is that... Yep. I see. Welcome to Holler. My condolences. I'll keep you in my prayers. Now both of y'all head on back to town, you hear? It's best you steer well clear of this area tonight. I'm out dealing with my own critters, and I won't be too appreciative if a couple of fools with a camera scare away the more sensitive wildlife. What are you hunting tonight? Something tall and hairy? Something musky? You see anything like that recently? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> you never could stay in, uh, stay in your business, Stella Ray Richmond. Put the damned camera down. Oh, come on, Duke. Maybe I could help out. I'm pretty good at tracking. You know I've learned from the best. That you did, but I have yet to see a shred of proof that you listen. Uh, that you listen to any of it. The way you tromp around the woods at night, yelling and. Huck a bung guess of what you have. Something's been getting at my chickens. I've lost three weeks. Three this week and can't afford to lose many more than that. I'm so sorry to hear that, but I wonder if Skunk Ape has taste for chicken. Now see, this is why I don't want you to come about these things. It ain't no Skunk Ape, whatever the hell that is. I know exactly what this is. But I know you won't believe me if I tell you. Oh, Duke, you don't think it's... I do, actually. It's those damn mountain lions. They're out there, Stella. I don't care what your little investigation turned up. You haven't been out in these woods as long as I have. Those sons of bitches are sneaky. Of course you wouldn't find any in one night of tracking. And I know for a fact that's what's been getting at my chickens. It couldn't be anything else. I'm telling you, man, mountain lions are extinct in these parts. They could exist. There hasn't been an actual sighting since the 1990s. And even those were iffy. I can't believe you got out there on your own you uh, da, da, on, on your YouTubes <laughs> saying some of the monsters spotted by a couple of school-aged Boy Scouts has been 100% confirmed. Yet, 
cougars are some kind of far-fetched fantasy made up by geezers like me. You made me look like a fool. I read those comments people were posting on your videos. They were calling me all kinds of names just for seeing things with my own eyes that I know to be true. I'm sorry, Duke. I didn't mean to sick anybody on you. I just don't think it's plausible. You'll eat those words when I'm carrying a mountain lion corpse out of those woods at dawn. And if you two don't want a face, a full, uh, a face full of buckshot, I suggest you run home and stay out of the woods tonight. chickens probably not the correct one don't butt in this is between duke and stella yeah this is it's not my place to say anything here you stand awkwardly by as the two continue to argue duke you're just wasting your time give us just one night out there to see what we can find and i'm sure you can get to the bottom of this we can get to the bottom of this yeah, right. You'll get some shaky footage of a raccoon and claim it's a heretofore here unknown creature that has heat ray vision or some such nonsense. I know what I'm looking for, and there's no way I'm backing off down. But I've got to film tonight. These videos need to be out by tomorrow evening so I can keep on my schedule. Then why didn't you film or no? We're not going to go down that rabbit hole. I, if I miss an update, I might lose a, my new sponsor. And who knows what that'll mean for my career. You ain't the only one on schedule. As well as, uh, as you well know, my boy Bo and me are headed down the state fair to show off Big Betty. We'll be gone near a whole week, so our chicken coop might as well have a big all-you-can-eat sign on it. You know how I feel about my chickens. I couldn't take it if I lost any more of my poor little ladies. Oh, he loves his chickens. Uh, I don't see no why I need to be involved in this. I'm out. It is too much pressure. Let's just go, Stella. We'll look somewhere else for some footage. He's not gonna budge. You're right, no point in losing any more time arguing. Fine, we'll head back to town. Break a leg out there, Duke. Break a what now? It means good luck, old man. All right, have a nice night, y'all. <sighs> so we're gonna go sneak around while he's, uh, you know, not looking right. As you and Stella return to the trail, she carefully looks back at the way you came. Okay, the ghost clear. There's no way we're letting Duke edge us out of that easy. Come on, I know the trail that'll let us get around him. Oh no. We're gonna get shot. <laughs> Duke's gonna shoot us. <sighs> Lead the way. And trust me, we don't have anything to worry about from old Duke's shotgun. Uh, d I've gone out hunting with him before. That man sounds like a truck crashing through the trees when he walks. Even if we do cross paths, here, we'll hear him long before he catches wind of us. The trail's just up this way. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. This looks like a good shot. Mind holding the camera? She hands you the camera and takes position. Nice. <clears throat> okay. As night falls, my new assistant, the mysterious Lily, and I find ourselves on a high hill in the Blue Ridge Mountains, where we'll begin a hunt for the elusive yet pungent skunk ape. Though mostly encountered in Florida, this possible relative of Bigfoot has been spotted all along the southern, uh, southeastern edge of the United States, including right in this very country county here's uh here's hoping we get a glimpse of tonight we'll check back on once we're on the trail until then stay searching stellars mm. 
I can take the camera off your hands for now. We'll be able to start the tracking scene, uh, scenes once the sun sets all the way. Damn, I would have to do so many takes of that. In the meantime, we get to take it all in this gorgeous scenery. I could use my book smarts here. I could. What else do we have here? Quietly look into Stella's eye. Are we, are we romancing? I don't want to romance Stella. But I can't romance my cousin. <laughs> That's not okay. I'm not gonna romance her, not yet. I might romance her down the road if I can though. We'll do our book smarts. I'm loving the biodiversity up here. I'm so used to only seeing pigeons and rats. I can't wait to whip out my copy of Guide to the Birds and Wildlife of Western, uh, Western North Carolina and go to town on some identifications. <laughs> oh, so you're a bit of a bird watcher. I hear bird watchers go wild for cardinals. And they're our state bird. So you're in for a great week. You got an eyeful of all the angry little red birds you can, your heart can desire. Oh, shh. Your quiet moment with Stella is broken by a loud, percussive snort. Is that a deer? The skunk came past us. It's Duke. Back with the shotgun. Run. <laughs> Death has come for me at last. Goodbye, cruel world. No need to come to terms with your own morality just yet. That's just the sound of a deer. Makes when they want to warn the rest of their herd about big scary predators like us. Let's check it out. Alright, show me the deer. As you and Stella hear the footfalls of animals retreating into the woods, she reaches for her flashlight. Mmm. You got a little something there on your face, buddy. What was it, H? Mm -hmm. A single deer remains behind, staring down the beam of light while Gretchen whines and pulls at her harness. And then it's gone. Stella, do your deers normally look like that? I guess it would be deer, it's not deers. Jeez, Gretchen, calm down. You're gonna hurt yourself. She cannot handle deer. When she gets like this, I usually have to pick her up and hold her. She has a bad habit of slipping her heart, uh, slipping her harness when she wants to go after something. You're too much of a potato. And they don't make harnesses to fit potatoes, do they? Yeah, I want to know about the cyst on that thing. I'm very curious about that. Was there some sort of cyst or something on that deer? It looked bad. Yeah, I think you're right. I bet it was an abscess, maybe a tumor. It's not like wild animals can get those taken care of, so they just get bigger and bigger, poor thing. But there's no, not much we can do about it. Mm. Mm. It's not too late to turn back. Nope, nope, I'm ready for the hunt. I got my heart rate up. I'm so ready for this hunt. Same for me. How's about we take a quick snack break to feed- you brought snacks. What kind of snacks did you bring? I've got all the best trail snacks. Those do look like trail snacks. Uh, you settle down to rest. Stella breaks open a bag full of assorted snacks. Trail mix, snack bar, dried apricot, sesame sticks. I do like sesame a lot. It was either dried apricot or I'm gonna do sesame sticks. You grab a handful of sesame sticks. Ah, the one snack I didn't make myself. I was hoping to wow you with some of my cooking skill. Did, <laughs> Did you dry the apricots yourself? But I guess that'll have to wait for some other time. Nevertheless, a delightfully tasty choice. 
the chips of hi the hiking trail. Some would say chips are the chips of the hiking trail. But only a fool would bring such a delicate shaped consuming snack. In their pack, when that, that, uh, that space could fit another bottle of water or more snacks. You're right, there is a lot of air in bag of chips. You and Stella settle down and overlook, sna uh, overlook snacks in hand as the quiet sounds of the evening wildlife wash over you. Gretchen gnaws a stick, distracted for the time being. So, tell me what it's like in Beans. I forgot that's what I named. I forgot that's what I named the city I live in. Do you have a house, an apartment? Do you live with family, roommates, pets? Tell me what it's like to be Lily. I live alone in a dingy studio apartment. Ah, where do we want to live? I, I live in a 12 by 12 shed in someone's yard. I live in the internet cafe. There is so much. What's the most normal answer I could give here? Do I have a difficult roommate? Ba -ba -ba -ba, I live in a closet in a house. We'll go with studio apartment. Dingy studio apartment. a mixed bag. At first it was kind of nice to finally have a space that was just mine, but now it feels cramped. It's like I'm stuck in a closet alone and no one can come let me out because I have chose this for myself. And as far as they know, I'm happy being there. The lights flicker, the toilet is constantly getting backed up because the landlady upstairs keeps flushing her cat's litter. It smells like cigarettes for some reason, and it's home to an extremely durable population of roaches. But I guess it's home. I do what I can, just spruce up the place. I got a plant! You know how they say living things are supposed to brighten up the room? Well, it's no longer living, so it's uh, definitely not brightening up the room. When you put it like that, I wonder if staying at that old mansion is a step up or a step down for you. Maybe just a step sideways. Have you tried looking for a different place or maybe finding a roommate? There's gotta be a better apartment than that in the big city like Beans. Uh, I've been saving up for something better. Oh, I, I hear you. I've been saving up for something better. Yeah? So what do you do for a living? I sell arts. I build programmatic ads for companies nobody likes. I'm a student, I'm a teacher, I'm in the service industry. Yeah, that's probably the closest thing to what I do. Oh wait, there's more. Oh no, there's roommates. I, I'm in the service industry. I work in food service. Not true, but the closest thing. I'm on my feet all day getting yelled at for things beyond my control. I mostly get paid for tip and tips. Uh, I actually really like it. You know what? You could get some nice customers in here, here and there. You know what? I actually kind of like it. For all the abuse I've taken from bad customers, I found a lot of support from my coworkers. That's great, Lily. Street smarts. A crisp breeze passes over you. You can't help but shake the feeling that you're being watched. You scan the tree line, but whatever might be over there is nowhere to be seen. What about you? What's your living situation? Do I want to mention it? Do I want to mention that we're being watched? I think we're being watched. Might be the skunk ape. Do your best to pretend it isn't watching us. We don't want to scare it off. What about you? What's your living situation? Gretchen and I live in a little house just outside of town. It's actually the house I grew up in, so it has a lot of pleasant memories attached to it. And I'm glad I could keep it in the family. My great-great-grandfather built it. And he must have done a great job because it's just as sturdy as it's ever been. Do 
do you live alone? Yeah. The place used to belong to my parents, but they're not around anymore. And the, hol uh, the holer is a small enough place that other folks don't need roommates. Oh, because they're dead? I think, I'll, I think I'm gonna choose to say nothing here. I'm gonna choose to say nothing here. I don't wanna say sorry if they just moved, but I don't wanna ask if they just moved if they passed. You hold your silence, uninterested, or perhaps unwilling to probe Stella any further. Ooh. What's that? Stella immediately packs her bag and slings it over her shoulder. Stella me uh da 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 <laughs> Skunk Ape! <laughs> oh man, it's the skunk ape. It's gotta be, right? Could be, could be. Whatever made that sound, I've never heard anything like it. And it's close. Here, hold Gretchen's leash for me. Do not give me the responsibility. I will let this dog go. You and Stella inch towards the tree lines as, the shi uh, as she shines her flashlight into the woods. Oh, it's chickens. As you approach, a series of weak clucks call out from a nearby bush. Maybe Duke's birds weren't eaten after all. Oh. What the, what the hell was that? Hold on, I gotta play that back. Holy shit. I'm guessing it must be maybe two, three feet tall. Doesn't look hairy either, so I think we can rule out skunk apes. But whatever it is, it has one of Duke's chickens. It looks like it's headed north. Let's go after it. What do we want to choose? Do we have to? <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's get some more book smarts in there. Use it while we have it. <laughs> Are we about to discover a new animal? I never thought I'd get to scratch that one off my bucket list. Yeah, I'm pumped. But we won't get to discover it unless we catch it. Let's go. Stella sprints into the woods in pursuit, leaving you no choice but to run after her. Gretchen excitedly pulls you along by her leash. Oh no, she trips. And there's our chicken buddy. <laughs> Oof. Da, 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 da. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. Just tripped on something weird. Oh no, that poor thing. It must have been one of Duke's. Oh Jesus, it's still alive. Don't go near that. Jesus, Stella, don't go near that. That thing is diseased. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm not gonna touch it. Not with my hands, at least. And hey, I'm sorry that this is turning out to be so grisly. I swear that it's not normally like this. We can go home after I film this, if that's what you want. No, 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 don't worry about me. I can keep going. I'm good to keep going. Good to hear. Let's film this and continue to hunt. Hmm. It seems we found one of Duke's chickens, folks, and he is, uh, right bad. She is not looking good. I'm hesitant to, speculate, but she definitely seems to have some sort of growth under her skin. Could be a tumor, could be something else. Either way, I don't think there's much that can be done for her at this point. Because I'm gonna have to put some massive content warnings for this video. Hey, do you hear that? We're not out here doing what you told us not to do. What in the Sam Hill are you two doing out here? Didn't I tell you to... Birdie? Oh, Birdie, what's wrong, darling? Good God. Did y'all see what did this to her? We're on the same team here. Duke, Duke, we're on the same team here. Duke, Duke. Calm down, buddy. 
We both want to know what happened to Birdie as much as you do right now. So we'll get to the bottom of this, I promise. We were on the trail when we found her like this. Whatever did this to her, I think we can hear them in the trees. Put that camera away, for God's sake, girl. I don't want to be in another of your videos. No one needs to see me like this. Oh. Oh, poor Duke. No one needs to see Birdie like this. You wouldn't put her online, would you? Not when she's like this, all swollen and hurting? Duke, did you hear me? I think they're coming closer. Oh, come out. You s Where'd the chicken- Oh, he has it. Come out, you sons of bitches. Duke, don't shoot them. We have no idea what'll happen. You hear that, Stella? That ain't the sound of something peace like Whatever these things are, they'll pay for what they did to my girls. Come on. Whatever your name is, grab the flashlight and help me line up the good shot. As the creatures in the tree lines grow louder and more numerous, Gretchen violently strains against her harness. Quick, they're closing in on us. I'm diving for Gretchen. I'm s I am not letting her go. I'm sorry, I can't. You dive forward and scoot Gretchen into your arms just before she managed to wiggle out of her harness. Your eyes fixated on the dark tree line over Duke's shoulders. God damn it. Maybe it would have been better to let the dog go. Hear her body hit the ground and then quiet as the chaos fades and the sound of nature creep back in. Gretchen, Lily, Duke, are you all right? I should have lined up the shot. I should have lined up the shot. I've already made a bad decision, no. No. No, I'm not okay, but I'm not shot, if that's what you're asking. I'm okay. Gretchen whines and shakes in your arms. Gretchen, here. I'll take her, my poor little pup. Thanks for watching out for her. D Duke, are you okay? Duke's not okay. Oh. Duke is... Not okay. Oh my god. Duke, holy shit. What do we do now? What the hell are we supposed to do? Duke had a hunting accident by himself. We gotta go to the police. Do, do, we, we, mm. Duke had a hunting accident by himself. Yeah, that's it. That's all that happened. Are you serious? We have footage of exactly what happened here. Sure, it's a little dark and shaky, but you can kind of make out that thing coming out of the woods. We can take it to the police. Duke's family deserves closure. Other people deserve to know what's out there. I don't trust cops. <laughs> I no. Mm, I don't. I don't think they're gonna believe it. I'm just <sighs> fine. I'm not gonna fight you. I'm not gonna fight you. We should have let the dog go. Fine, but don't think I'm happy about this. You'd better not let them pin this on me. I won't. I promise. We need more footage. Come on, let's go after them before we lose our chance. And leave a... A man is dead, Stella. Lead the way. Lead the way. Looks like Duke managed to tag one of them before he... You know. We should be able to follow that blood trail. Let's go while it's still fresh. 
As you and Stella push through the woods, the unearthly sound once again surrounds you. Keep running. God, they're everywhere. What are they? I think we're almost there. The trees are starting to thin out. That's strange. The shrieks pull back into the steady whispers as you and Stella stumble upon the putrid bodies of a dozen of dozens of dead and dying animals. A sinking realization pulls at your gut. This is their nest and you're surrounded. More of those swellings. All the animals here have them. Or had them. No, we... We should have grabbed the shotgun. We need to get out of here. The footage doesn't matter anymore. Let's just get the hell away from this nest. Agreed. Oh god. Just as you follow Stella into a mad dash through the woods, so too do the unearthly hollers and whispers of the nests. In the highest branches of the trees and down on the forest floor, they're all around you, casually keeping pace with your all-out sprint. I should have picked the athletic one. We're almost there. Oh god, get in there and drive away, please. As you and Stella reach the main road, the cries of the creatures fade back into the sounds of nature. It sounds like they've stopped following us. I should get reception now that we're back on the main road. Let me find my phone so I can call the sheriff. You feel a buzz in your pocket. Six missed calls from Tabitha. And 13 text messages. Oh, Tabitha. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, what should we do? Da -da 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 -da. Let's call her. You try and call Tabitha back, but it goes straight to voicemail. We should text that we're okay then. You text Tabitha back and let her know that you're okay. Your message sits unread. Uh, Tabitha seems worried. It's pretty late, isn't it? Stella pulls out her phone and dials. Hello, Earl? It's Stella Richmond. I'm up on the mountain on... Astrona Trail? Duke is dead, Earl. Shotgun. It happened right in front of us. There's there's something in the woods. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, I think we're okay, but hurry. Jesus, Earl. Who's gonna tell Bo? Oh. Not me. I call not it. I guess now we wait. Lovely, I definitely want to be questioned by the police. It takes a little while, but eventually a patrol car arrives at the scene. Out of it walks two officers, Sheriff Hugby, a friendly older man, and Deputy Franklin, a serious man wearing sunglasses, despite it being the middle of the night. You're right about that. Um, What you doing there with sunglasses on, buddy? See, right there. A thing jumps out of the woods, then the shotgun goes off. What in Sam's Hill? What is that? Some kind of Pillsbury Doughboy? Could be a naked maniac. As the video reveals the creature's nest, Franklin ever so slightly lowers his sunglasses. Or a whole bunch of naked maniacs. What in the heck is that? Some sort of crop circle? They killed Duke. Uh-huh. Now we're gonna have to confiscate the camera, Miss Richmond. If you don't mind, this is evidence. But I... Stella, there's a dead man. You would not be able to upload that. Let me just turn it off to save the battery. Stella gave in to their request suspiciously easily. Okay. Taking note of that. Here you go, Deputy Franklin. We appreciate your compliance with the law. 
We'll get a team out in the morning to retrieve the body, but for now, Sheriff Hugby and I, please call me Earl. Earl and I will escort you and who are you exactly? That's Lily. She came into town today for the funeral. Lily as in Tabitha's cousin. Yeah. Damn. Didn't think you'd actually show. We'll escort you both back to town. If there's a naked maniac on the loose, it's best you don't walk back on your own. It wasn't a... Never mind. Weren't you going out there tonight? There's a dead body in the woods. Those things out there could attack someone else. Well, it ain't exactly old Duke. Uh, like old Duke is going anywhere at this point. He'll still be out there in the morning. We only have a skeleton crew at the moment. Monday nights are Deputy Dirksen's bowling nights. We'll be on alert for any more reports of naked maniacs, but retrieving Duke will just have to wait. Now, if you'll kindly step into the vehicle, we can return you safely to your home. Do we have to ride back with you? We can just walk. Those creatures left. We'll be fine. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to insist for your own safety. Still a size. Okay, thank you. You can ride up front with me, little lady. That is, if your mama permits. Sure, Earl. You can hold Gretchen on the way back to town. Oh. Gretchen. The cops usher you and Stella into the back of your squad. You're just the cutest little thing, Miss Gretchen. Yes, you are. Sheriff Hugby pats Gretchen on the head affectionately. But she remains wholly focused on Stella, a worried look stretched across her little pug face as Hugsby scratches behind her ears. Oh, s Gretchen! For such a gracious person, person, Stella is unusually quiet. Guard. That does not say gracious. As the car makes its way down the pitch black roads. Stella, you good? She doesn't respond. I'm gonna place a comforting hand on her shoulder. You reach out and rest your palm gently on her shoulder. She jumps slightly at your touch, but you can feel some of her tension ease and hear her let out a self-soothing sigh. I'm gonna remain silent. You sit quietly watching the trees pass by in the light of the headlights. Every now and then you think you see a pale, anguished face staring out at you before it slips back into the darkness. Soon the rumble of gravel beneath the tires gives way to uneven pavement and the car comes to a stop in front of a small cottage. You two stay out of trouble We'll have this all sorted out in the morning. Just get a good night's sleep. And you, whatever your name was. I pee freely. Fox Mulder. Lily. Sure. You're in town for the funeral. Good. Don't you go leaving before then. I imagine we'll need to ask you a few questions about everything you've seen tonight. Stella, keep an eye on her for us. Make sure she doesn't get into any trouble. You have a good night right now. Bye bye, Gretchy. And you'll have a lovely evening. If any bugaboos give you any trouble, you know how to get in touch. So, you want to explain a little bit about what's go going on right there? And here you are, back in town, away from the woods, with no one but Stella in sight. Holy shit. Okay, Stella, what? Why the hell would you ask if we could walk home? I hope you don't mind me asking, but why did you want to walk home? That's a fair question. I've just had some bad experience with cars. I don't know how to drive them, and I don't like getting into them unless it's literally a question of life or death. 
Which I guess tonight was. Sorry if I weirded you out. God, what a night. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that, um... I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this moment to assume that her parents may have passed in a car accident. Or something like that. Hmm... So how you how you holding up? How am I holding up? I mean, not great, but I'm more worried about you. I can't believe they just implied that you're a suspect. Even after we showed them all that footage. Even after we found that that nest. But it's okay. I'm not gonna let anything bad happen to you. I was there. I filmed the whole thing. At the very least. It'll never hold up in court. And it won't get to that point either because we're going to do a little investigating of our own. We've got to find more about those things. If we can get clear footage or better yet, trap one of them, there's no way they can blame you for what happened. The library doesn't open for a while, but I've read every book on the cryptids. They have and never came across anything like that. Hmm. There is someone in town who might have some useful information. My friend's mom? Her place isn't far. We should have her over now before it gets any later. Can I ask what time it is? Maybe we shouldn't be knocking on somebody's door if it's already... I don't know. Say two in the morning. I should check in on Tabitha. You're, you're not wrong about that. I should check in on Tabitha. Should probably check in on Tabitha. My friend's place is on the way back, and stopping by shouldn't take long. You sure you don't want to stop in first? I know I wouldn't want to head up the mountain road by myself after everything that's happened tonight. Well, when you put it like that, I'm, I'm, I'm down, I'm down. Awesome. Let's go. Okay. Oh, she's still awake. You s Lily? Jesus. Hello. You and Stella turn to see a shadowy figure staring at you from across the road. You didn't hear it approach. Welcome home. Before you can respond, the door behind you swings open, an older woman standing in the entryway. Go home, Wayne. I can't help you tonight. You look back and the figure is already gone, disappeared into the shadows of the night. I'm sorry about that, Stella. Some people just can't be helped. What brings you out here so late? Um... No, are they just gonna move past that guy being- th they're just gonna move past that. How are they gonna just move past that? And who's this? For Hi Miss Forsen Forsen? Forsen? This is Lily. Is it okay if we come in? Of course, of course, you're in luck. I just put on a uh, water for hibiscus tea. And for goodness sake, you call me Miss S S No. The other one was e easier. Sybil? You're an adult now, after all. Sybil. Sybil? Sybil. Sybil? Sybil. I'm gonna call you Sybil. Welcome to my little nook. It's nice to finally meet you, Lily. I was so sorry to hear about your mother. Vivian was such a lovely soul. And she's been sorely missed in the holler. And now poor... Poor Lynn is gone as well. Do let me know if there's anything you need while you're in town. What was that outside? I'm sorry, I'm not moving past that. Who was that outside? Just a very sick man. You don't need to worry about him. You knew my mom? Of course, dear. She was a good friend of mine for many years. She was a, such a lovely woman. You should come by sometimes. I can... 
delight you with my unsavory tales of her youth. We need your help. Ah, oh, yes, I suppose pleasantries can wait for another time. What's got you here so late? You seem troubled. I have an itch. No. Ow. Ah. You know about weird stuff, right? Unexplainable stuff? Hmm. I'm not so sure I follow, dear. I know which oils to use for which uh, which aches. I know a bit about classical spiritualism. Just what sort of unexplainable things are we talking about? Duke was killed tonight by something in the woods. Oh my lord. Have you contacted the police? Yes, and they didn't take it very seriously. They're not even looking for the body until tomorrow. Those things out there? I don't even know what to, how to describe them. Hmm. I can't say I know much about local wildlife. My daughter has always had a bright, uh, brighter gift for nature than I. This wasn't, this isn't local wildlife, Miss For Forsyth. Here, I can show you. Stella pulls out a memory card. That explains why she gave over the camera so easily. <laughs> From her sleeve and pops it into her phone. This must have been why she was so quick to hand over the camera. I wasn't about to just let the police hold on to this. At least not before we had a chance to make a copy. They're gonna be mad if they find out. <laughs> but it was very smooth. It was smooth. Smooth. The cops wouldn't. Uh, the cops wouldn't know what to do with that footage, anyways. Imagine if they accidentally erased it. Exactly. I'll give it to them if they ask again. But for now, we can examine the footage for ourselves. I want to examine the footage. Where was this? Up the mountain to the northwest. Do you know something? If you know something you need to share with us, share with the class lady. Within the town's limits, yes. I see. Is there a way to make the video bigger? And louder if you can. I need to plug the memory card into a computer. I could go back and get mine. No need. Kanika should still be awake. She can lend us hers. You'd better come with Stella. I'm sure she'll be more willing to help a friend than her nosy mother. Miss Kanika! Coming out. We could use a little help. What mom? <laughs> oh, hey, Stella. And Gretchen, who's a good potato. And a stranger. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing in my house? I was helping Stella with a video and something terrible happened. Tabitha's cousin. Yep. Sweetie, we were wondering if we could borrow your laptop. Stella and her friend have a video to show us. It's really important, Kanika. Okay. My room's a mess. I'll just bring it out here. Oh, but I kind of wanted to see your room. They- I want to see the footage too. They won't let me see it. <sighs> Heads up, Kanika. This is graphic. It is very graphic. Duke got killed out in the woods tonight. It's on the rec- the recording. Wait, are you serious? Duke's dead? We can watch it without you. You know I have a harder stomach than any of our friends. I'm pressing play. Silence washes over the room as the video plays. Stella, what the hell is this? Something yet to be explained. I'm sorry either of you had to see this, but Lily and I have no idea how to make heads of, or tails of this. Stella, are you okay? Did you get hurt? I'm fine, really, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm fine too, thanks for asking. I'm just gonna remain silent. 
Poor Duke. Poor Bo. Has anyone told him yet? We talked to the police, I hope they told Bo. About. But Earl and Deputy Franklin didn't seem to be in much of a hurry to do anything. I'll call him later tonight. But for now, we'll have. Uh, we have something far more serious to discuss. I didn't like Duke anyways. That would be a terrible thing to say. I agree, those things are still out there. And as long as they are, more people are in danger. So very true, but not for the reasons you think. These things, my grandmother called them ditchlings. They are a terrible omen. A sign of great suffering and destruction to come. Um, come on. Whatever's going on, uh, whatever's doing this is serious. Stop scaring Stella and Lily with this tail. Tail foe. Tail foe. Tail foe crap. A man just died. Have some respect. Kanika, sweetie, let your mother talk. The creatures themselves are harmless to people, despite the grisly scene in the woods. How can you say that? Duke is dead. An unfortunate accident and nothing more. Just a bird's flock before a storm. The dishling congregate where tragedy is soon to fall. Does... Does that mean... Does that mean even if we helped Duke, he still would have had that accident then? To see one is to be cursed by fate. To see so many in one place is... Sylvie... holds her silence. Jesus, Mom. They've clearly had a rough night. They don't need this. It's okay, Kanika. This is helpful. Stella, whatever these things are, they aren't magic. We can't rule that out, not after what we saw. But fine. Let's focus on what we know. Whatever they are, they're doing something to these animals. You saw that nest. What were those growths? Uh, must be a part of their circle of life, maybe? That growth is probably parasitic, like when a wasp lays eggs in a caterpillar. That seems plausible, but I don't want to jump to any conclusions about something like this out there. Not without doing some research or talking to a biologist. I'm sure there's a rational explanation that'll clear all of this up. Oh dear. I'd forgotten entirely about the tea. Let me fix you up a couple of cups. It'll help soothe your nerves. I don't know, it's getting late. I should get Lily, uh, I should let Lily get some rest. I ran her ragged today with all the hiking and running through the woods in terror. I mean, I can keep going. can. I'm happy to keep going. I just, what I'm worried about really is Tabitha all alone by herself. Yeah, I'm ready to pass out. It was nice meeting you though. Thanks for the help. And it was nice to meet you, Kanika. Sorry it had to be under such weird circumstances. Hopefully the next time we meet will be a little less terrifying. We should all hang out this week. Maybe we could even get Reese to chill with us. I could really use it, but for now, thanks, uh, thank you both for so, for everything. Let me get you some of my housemade peppermint tea to go. It really does wonders to the soothe the soul. Bye, Stella. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? And call me if you need to talk. Thanks, Kanika. See you. Bye, Lily.
Bye bye. I'm actually really sad now that they've mentioned tea. I meant to make tea before I started this and I just forgot. So no tea for me, unfortunately. Ah, it's excellent iced or warm. Though with the nights getting chillier, warm will probably be best. Helps wake up the bones. I thought it was supposed to soothe us, not wake us up. Be careful out there, both of you. Sybil turns and closes the door behind her. Alrighty. Let's head back home. My home, I mean. But I thought we were... And here we are. Welcome to stay the night if you want. I should probably head back before Tabitha has... Uh... I want to check. I do want to check on Tabitha, but I am scared to walk home by myself. <laughs> As much as I want to stay with Stella. Because I think there's a future for romance down this path with her. I'm just saying. But I, I just... I, I, gotta, I gotta check on Tabitha. Should probably head back and check on Tabitha. That's sweet of you. Are you sure you're okay heading back up the mountain alone? I really don't want to. She did say those things were harmless, but they never said anything about that man that was outside of her house. She did say those things were harmless. I think I'll be okay. It's not far. Well, I won't stop you if you really want to go back. Here's my number. Call me when you get it there. Okay, and good luck. You and Stella exchange numbers. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, we're in this together. Yeah, we are. Stay safe, buddy. Okay, you begin the long hike back up to the Scarlet Estate alone. Continue down the path. Almost home. Continue down the path. Okay, you've made it. Your salvation is Oh, I wonder if the door's locked. You make a mad dash to the door. Try the door. As you reach for the doorknob, the door swings open. She waited for me! Where the hell have you been? die tonight <laughs> uh, I met this girl in town and we hit it off up, 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 uh. so I called you back don't call her tabby oh I don't know what's right I got sucked into something and it was weird Uh, I, yeah, I got, uh, da, 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 da. I met a girl in town and we hit it off. She was nice. I met this girl in town and we wound up really hitting it off. We went on this night hike to find cryptids. Ah, uh, so you met Stella then. Ugh, that explains everything. And she's gotten you all worked up. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, can, can you tuck me in? Okay, good night. I probably should have brought up the dead man. You were lonely in the estate. The sounds of the wind whistling through the house gives you an uneasy feeling in your gut. It's probably best to turn in and try to leave the night behind you. As you settled into your room, you remember that Stella asked you to call her once you got back. Which means we definitely should call her. You pull out your phone and call. Hey, how are you? She sounds a little different. Like she- Oh, I should have stayed! No! She's been crying! I should have stayed. <laughs> Did you make it back alright? Yeah, how are- How are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm alright. How are you? 
totally fine. I mean, as fine as I could be, I guess. You don't have to worry about me. Go get some Z's, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. From the relative safety of this uncomfortable bed, the events of the past evening seem like something that happened to someone else. Though you can still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments for now. You're safe and warm. Eventually, the sun will rise and chase away the monsters and make them seem like nothing but bad dreams. Maybe tomorrow, if you're lucky, you'll wake up in the normal world and have a boring week in the mountains with your sour-faced cousin. It's a nice thought, but deep down, you can't help but wor worry that things will only get worse. Was that it? Was that chapter one? Hello! Look at all those eyes! Yeah, I think that was chapter one. I don't... I had to go check on Tabitha. I couldn't not go check on Tabitha. But man, do I feel bad leaving Stella behind like that. I feel really bad about leaving her behind like that. I wish I could have taken her with her. I wish I could have offered, but it's not my house to offer. Are you crying? Is that Stella? That's... That is blood. That was blood in that room. Alpagas? And something in that tunnel. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I do feel really bad about leaving Stella, but I had to go check on Tabitha. She had already called me and like, like I had six missed calls from her. And she was up waiting for me to... She may not say it, but she was worried. She was worried about me, I know she was. But I definitely am going to try to romance Stella down the road if I can. I would love to romance Stella if I can. Ah, that must be the room we're not allowed to go in. Why you got so many locks on that door? What secrets you hiding? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now... Do we just continue on to chapter two? Yeah, this is the end of episode one. Episode two awaits. If you'd like to continue with this world in state episode two, please save your game now. Oh. I didn't even try to look at any of this stuff over here. Okay, yeah. Save that right there. I think I'm ready to continue. Would you like to see any <laughs> You know what? That's honestly very nice of them to give us a recap, but we just pl we just went through it so we don't need the recap. No thank you on the recap. You open your eyes. The sun has risen, the birds are singing. You are still alive, and for now, you are safe. Your gaze wanders across the room to the window and the woods beyond. You wonder if the monsters are lurking there. Just beyond the trees, ready to pounce as soon as you leave the crumbling estate, a familiar unease settles into your gut, Tangle, uh, tangling into a knot of anxiety wriggling as the events of the night play out in your head. You can't help but remember Duke, slumped against a tree, pieces of him scattered across the clearing. You're not sure if you'll ever feel okay again after what you've seen, but you can't stay in bed forever. No, we have to go meet our dear cousin Tabby. Hunger pulls you from the clammy depths of the mattress. I'm gonna go check on my little possum friend. How you doing, Gus? You open the drawer to check if the little possum you met yet uh, on the little possum you met yesterday. Oh, good, he's still here. That's nice. <laughs> I can't pat the little man's. He would definitely bite me. <laughs> Leave the little man's a piece. 
You decide to leave the little mans in peace. Uh, look out the window. We creep towards the window carefully, not to be seen by whatever might be lurking in the garden. For a second, she saw you saw movement. It could have been an animal. It could have been something else. Whatever it was, it's gone now. I wish I would have actually looked at it, because it was like I, I saw just the slightest bit of movement before it left. Maybe I'll head out there and investigate after you finish waking up. Yeah, let's text Stella. It's probably a good idea to check in with your new friend. You can't imagine she's holding up very well. Send a picture of a tired cat you found on the internet. No, I want to ask how she's doing. It might take her a minute to get back to you. In the meantime... Yeah, okay, let's poke around the closet. Right, the doll didn't move during the night. Maybe it isn't haunted after all. Though, after everything you went through yesterday, that's hardly a consolation. I guess that means we have nothing else to do in here and it's time to go. Time to start our day. Hello, kitty kitty. You're back in the kitchen. Fufu eyes you from her favorite spot on the counter. Hello. You're back. Uh, da, 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 excuse me, ma'am, but may I pet you? I'm just saying, before this ends, I. Before we finish with this game, I will have pet this cat. Part of you hopes that flattery might win her over, as silly as that may seem. You, you are, after all, talking to a cat. Flattery will get you everywhere. Rufru flicks her tail faster. It doesn't look promising. I should have left. I, I should have let off with a dead man. Uh, did you know the police called me this morning? You've only been here one day and you've already had a run-in with the cops? <laughs> we were chased by monsters in the woods. <laughs> no, hold on. Uh, Duke's blood is on my hands. <laughs> Can I say, trouble follows me wherever I go. A rough night. Can you cut me some slack? <laughs> By the monsters and you're worried about the cops? Uh, I think... I think we'll start with this one. I want to know if they said anything about Duke. Did they say any- uh, the, did the cops say anything about Duke? Did they find the body? Body? They didn't say anything about a body, but apparently he never went home last night. And they had a quite- uh, quite a few questions about you, Lily. And before you ask, don't worry, I told them you're an upstanding citizen. Thanks for having my back. Seem unfazed by this. There are monsters in the wood. We need to leave. <laughs> oh. Say da 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 da. Thanks for having my back. I really appreciate that. Sure. What else is family for? I sh <laughs> Anytime she smiles at me like that, I'm just like, she's not happy right now. <laughs> It can't be a real smile. Okay, we were chased by the through the woods by monsters, and you're worried about the cops? No. All right. Let's let's, let's try this one. I had a really rough night. Can you cut me some slack? A man died right in front of me, and those woods are full of actual monsters. No, some old far farmer went missing, and that's it. Don't let Stella get you all worked up over this. She has that effect on people. Uh, we can keep going. I, I do want to know what's up with you and Stella. I'm curious, but you don't have to tell me if you don't want to tell me, but please tell me because I'm nosy. 
We just have a history, that's all. I don't need to explain myself to you. I'm sorry. Good. I gotta get to work, but listen, you'd better stay out of trouble today. I want you home by sunset. Oh, she's giving me a curfew now. No, I don't want to hear your complaints. Just do what I ask and we won't have any more problems. Tabitha takes a few steps towards the door. Sunset. <laughs> your cousin huffily exits the kitchen. Her footsteps fade down the hall, ending in a characteristic creak, then slams of the front uh, then slams of the front door as it opens and closes behind her once again you are the only human in the estate a text from stella hey thanks lily thanks for checking in uh hope you're all right all things considered i'm doing okay not great but hanging in there up most of the night on cryptid forums but no good answers yet i'm at the library if you want to join I have scones. Ooh, scones. What kind? Ghost her. Don't ghost her. No, cool. I'm on my way. And that's that. Time to start your day. I'm going to investigate that garden. As your eyes wander through the garden door, you shut it, remembering the brief glimpse of something you saw from your upstairs window. It was probably just a raccoon, but the uncertainty of what you saw gnaws at you and compels you to investigate, if only to prove that it was nothing. At the very least, you don't see anything now. Investigate further. You wander further into the garden, trying to pinpoint the spot where that thing had been lurking. If indeed there had been a thing to begin with. Hmm. Take it all in. The garden is peaceful, but undeniably eerie. Here more than anywhere else, you're surrounded by the ghost of what this place used to be. A greenhouse sits in the midst of the overwhelming greenery, unreachable for, from years of neglect. Its glass clouded and cracked, statues reach out from within seas of weeds as it begins to be res uh, begs to be rescued. And most strikingly, behind, uh, behind a pair of rusty metal gates at the very peak of the mountain sits a graveyard. You can just make out a few headstones the scarlet name carved deep and proud into their faces. You notice what a good view someone would have of your window if they stood there. You're standing there now. Check the ground for clues. You crouch down, pushing aside the greenery to examine soft earth. A boot print, a big boot print, and what looks like some... Assyria? Your thoughts turn to the specter from the night before. Oh, you snap a quick photo just in case it comes in handy later. That's honestly smart. <laughs> I'm gonna text it to Stella. I'm trying to get in good with Stella. You send the photo to Stella. What could I found in the garden across from my window? No way that's tapped at this sized. You head back inside, time to figure out what to do with the rest of your day. Do we want to make another PB&J? Make another PB&J. Sure, Stella might have some at, uh, uh, have scones at the library, but scones are later. PB&J is now. And you quickly scrape together the ingredients and gobble up a delicious breakfast. And that's that. Head to town. Yeah, I know. As delicious as scones sound, I still have the walk there, so I, I'm going to be hungry for a minute. The walk down back to town is much less pleasant today than it was yesterday. When you didn't yet know the wo woods were full of monsters and strange men who know your name. You stare anxiously into the darkness between the trees, searching for any signs of movement. But the woods are still, at least for now, Mm 
The autumn-tinged mountains sprawling for miles in every direction now feel less like beautiful scenery and more like walls of a cage. Your phone buzzes in your pocket. Jeez, that's creepy. All the more reason to come to the library. Look who I found at the library. She said she was up all night thinking about the video, adding you to a group text. Nice. I'm only here because it's <laughs> quieter than the store. Or was. And I'm trying to figure out what animal that could be. I don't buy into the hairbender of doom stuff. We all, we know what animals they are. They're ditchlings. And they are har harbingers of doom. Harbingers? Harbingers. Harbingers. Sounds like they're having fun. Dang, I need those scones. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. Can't wait two. Mm, I would never put a two. Send heart emojis. Mm. Yep. I'm gonna send a heart emoji. Nope. I need those scones. That's the one I'm going with. Food is priority. Always. Almost back to town. Continue down the path. Ooh. That's Avery and I just I just knew your name. I just saw it. S Sybil? Sybil? Maybe. You make it to town in one piece. No creatures jumped out at you. No scary men blocked your path. The sight of other people is comforting. Helping you to forget the sh things you witnessed as if they happened to someone else. Oh, hey, Lily. Well, hello there. We were just talking about you. I stopped by Sybil's to pick up her new tea blend, and well, you're the biggest thing to come into this town since the coal mine. Folks have been absolutely buzzing about you. Hopefully all good news. You went out with Stella last night, right? Did something happen out there? She barely even waved when she walked by. Mm. Should we tell Avery the truth? I'm traumatized and I'm not ready to talk about it yet. <laughs> I don't know how much we should say. Because they don't want to know spoilers for the video and if it does come out for a video, I'm traumatized, I'm not ready to talk about it. What happened last night was traumatizing. I don't think I'm ready to talk about it yet. Okay, okay, I get it. Sounds like you've been shaken up pretty bad. I'll tell you what, I'm on break for the next half hour. Why don't you swing by the diner if you want to decompress? Winnie can fix you uh, some uh, some of Sybil's new blend. Maybe it'll calm you down a bit. I think you'll like today's mix. It's Chaga and Lemon Balm. Should help you to stress and tension. And if you feel like talking, I'll be all ears. But no pressure. Anyways, it's up to you. See you around, Lily. See you around, Suba. Take care now, Avery. Bye-bye. See, you're a private person. I can respect that. You never know how someone might respond to hearing the truth of what you encountered last night. I better get back to it myself. I'm glad I was able to catch you this morning, only to see how you were holding up. Please don't hesitate to stop by if I, uh, if I can be of any help. Aren't you telling us? What aren't you telling us? You're awfully relaxed given everything you've told us last night. Don't mistake my calm demeanor for complacency. We all have our parts to play in this. I've shared what I know about the Ditchlings, and I trust that you and Stella have what it takes to get to the bottom of things. I'm so sorry to cut our conversation short, but I've got things need, uh, that need tending to. Stay safe, Lily. And God bless. You probably uh, you probably have a bit of time before you need to, or you're needed at the library. Yeah, let's go ahead to the diner. I'm okay. I, I want to talk more to Avery. The diner is a little quiet today, but the air is still heavy with the tantalizing smell of breakfast. 
<laughs> no warn the patrons of danger. No, we're gonna talk to Avery. You slide into the booth across from Avery. Hey there, stranger. Before you can exchange words, Winnie slides up, a fresh mug of tea in hand. Heard you might need this. The answer to 29 down is oink, by the way. Oh. There it is. Password. What? But the clue is pen sound. How is that... Uh, how does that sound make it? I'm pretty sure oink is not the correct answer. Wait, pen like pig pen? Are you kidding me? How was I supposed to guess that? Mm. I don't know why you even bother with those things. They're just gonna frustrate you. It's just something to do to fill the time. But maybe I should switch to Sudoku. I love Sudoku. I'm not great at it, but I love Sudoku. When he leaves, Avery contemplating daily newspaper puzzles, returning to her seat behind the counter. So, thanks for telling me about last night. If you want to really get into the grisly details, you can tell me. I won't judge. I got an itch on my eye. <laughs> uh, try the tea. You hesitantly take a sip of your tea. It tastes like you're drinking mold that someone tried to unsuccessfully spruce up with a lemon balm. So I'm guessing we don't like the tea. Politely put the tea down and never pick it back up. <laughs> I'm guessing we don't like the tea very much. I probably should have warned you about the tea. Kanga does not mess around. It's a fungus harvested from local birch trees. It's supposed to be super healthy for you and sure tastes like it. It's a challenging drink. Okay, so I think we're gonna go ahead and tell Avery about last night. I think I'm okay telling Avery. You spill the beans. Glad to have someone to talk to about the horrors you've witnessed. Wow, that is some heavy stuff. I wonder if Stella seemed distant. Monsters in the woods. I may not have lived here long, but I've never heard of anything like that happening around these parts. My eye still itches. I can't say I like the thought of it. Now that I think about it, when the cops came in for their morning coffee, they mentioned something about going out to the woods to look for someone. They must have been duped. They seem so disconnected from it. I figured it couldn't be very serious, but wow. They seem weirdly suspicious of me. Yeah, they do seem very suspicious of us. I don't get it. They saw Stella's footage. They saw what happened out there, but it feels like so far all they've done is hound me. Hey, I don't know if it helped your anxiety, but if they think you did something, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't bother going after you. Those cops come in here every day, and I feel like I know them pretty well by now. And let me tell you, they have no follow-through. I can't tell you the number of complaints they've just, like, dropped after a day or two. And I'll vouch for you if they try anything. I appreciate that. I always appreciate that. What do we want to say this time? Yeah, we'll go ahead for this one. Why not? Let me know if you happen to cross any leads. We're on the case, but I hardly know where to start. Definitely. Oh man, it looks like my shift is starting. Hopefully the Changa is a chance to start working its magic. The diner is where everybody comes to gossip, so I hear a lot about what goes on around here. I'll let you know if anyone mentions those monsters or anything else strange or unusual. Every slips out of the booth, giving a friendly half wave before disappearing into the back. You leave the diner ready to continue your day. Guess that probably means we should head to the library now. Nope. Straight to the library now. I don't even know why we would go to the store. Kanika's not even there. Hmm, you enter the former town hall. 
What once must have been a stately foy has since been converted into rows of shelves. Meeting rooms and offices long ago gave way to the assorted reference collections of reading areas. Hmm, this is a good place. Oh hey, you made it! <laughs> Shush Stella and point at all the books before heading over to her table. No, no, settle in with Stella and Kanika. You head over to Stella and Kanika's table and settle in. Hmm. Glad you could join us. I'm glad that you brought Gretchen. Morning, Lily. You look tired. Hmm. Yeah, the estate isn't the easiest place to get a good eight hours. Also, we went to bed really late last night, so I don't think we got eight hours. Hmm. I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> well, yeah, it was pretty hard to fall asleep last night, all things considered. Yeah. I can't say I got a wink myself. Yeah, same. Anyways, I guess we should get started. Oh? Before I forget, we've got to talk about that photo you sent me this morning. Kanika, check this out. Lily found it in Tabby's garden this morning. Right in the line of sight of her room. Why does my eye still itch? I've itched it so much. What in the world is that liquid around it? it looks like pus. Do you think it's Wayne? I'm just saying, they did know my name and they were bleeding. I don't know if there's a connection to what happened in the woods, but it felt worth texting. I can't say I'm thrilled about the thought of someone watching me. Yeah. Yeah, I can't say I'm thrilled at the thought of someone watching my room. No kidding. Maybe it'll be safer if you don't stay at the estate. Do you think it could be the creep we saw outside of the general store last night? You know your name. And those boots prints match up with the mining getup. Well, apparently I missed a lot last night. You're not talking about Wayne, are you? That guy keeps coming to my mom's tea room. I think he's... I think there's something really wrong with him. Yeah, we are. I wonder if there's any connection between the guy and what happened in the woods last night. Like, what? I mean, I don't have any specific, but... We do have that whole prophecy of impending doom angle to explore. And this photo is weird. I can't stop thinking about those splatters of the ground. If this, uh, if this whoever left those prints is sick, maybe it's from the creatures you encounter. Hello. What I'm uh, assuming is either the mayor or something of this town. And little girl stranger. Your library is incredible. I can't imagine how much work you have to put in to maintain this this sort of collection. Well, thank you. Hey, Oscar, this is Lily. You know, Tabby's cublin. Uh, cublin. <laughs> the words aren't wording today, but we're trying to get them too. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have known you were a Scarlet. You look so much like Vivian. Not that I knew her very well. I was still a little kid when she left. But that Scarlet resemblance, it's, um, strong. Hmm. I'm Oscar. Not even gonna try your last name. Chief librarian and only librarian. Oscar's amazing. He's practically built the library from scratch. Yeah, I'm a little jealous of what the kids around here get to grow up with. They don't know how good they have it. Back when I was in elementary school, all the library had was a couple of shelves of boring books donated by old people. Well, they're too kind, but speaking of kids, have either of you seen Rosalina around town? I don't want to be a helicopter dad, but she hasn't been answering my texts and I wanted to make sure she isn't getting into trouble out there. You know the crowd she hangs around with? Mm, they're good kids at heart, I'm sure. They're just up at the old Maxwell place doing teen stuff. I'm curious how old we are. Old enough for this guy to have parents that I think probably 
we're the same age. Maybe. I wonder if there are plenty of times in my day, but I'll be sure to keep my eyes peeled. Mm. Kids are smarter than you can't. She can take care of herself. Mm, yeah, sure. Why not? You might not want to let her run off like that anymore, though. It's not as safe as it usually is around here. Mm, is that so? Kanika's Bryce, there's some weird stuff going on in the woods. That's actually why we came in today. Have you ever heard of creatures called dishlings? They're a type of cryptid that shows up around places on the brink of a uh, disaster. They kind of look like the Pillsbury Doughboy was a creepy pasta. Kanika's mom told us about them last night after seeing some footage we got in the woods. Ditchlings doesn't ring a bell. Dang, worth a shot. Okay, if you were, say, trying to predict a horrible disaster that might befall our town, where would you start looking? Hmm, well, they say history repeats itself, so I'd probably try and figure out what sort of disasters this region typically falls prey to. Should I be worried about something? I don't know yet. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go nab some more books. Behave while I'm gone, Gretchen. Oh, you don't have to worry about her, Stella. You're such a good dog, dog aren't you, Gretchen? Here, have a biscuit, old girl. You just have that on you? Oh, that's cute. That's really cute. <laughs> Gretchen inhales the soft biscuit drool leaking from her toothless mouth as she's swallows it whole. I'm pretty sure Stella's barking up the wrong tree, Oscar. I don't think you have to worry about any horrible calamity befalling the town. But she's right about the weird stuff. There's definitely something unusual going out in the woods. Good evening to you too, as well. Hmm. I don't believe this is supernatural stuff, but the woods aren't safe. A man's already dead. leave with that. A man's already dead. It, I'd say it's plenty reasonable to play it safe. I'm gonna try calling Rosalina again. I'm sure she's fine, really, but Rosalina's a smart uh, Rosalina's a smart kid. She knows better than to go around getting into trouble and, well, we'll make sure to keep our eyes out peeled. Thanks, Kanika. And Lily? If you see a 13-year-old girl with black braids and glasses, would you let her know her dad is worried about her? Oscar anxiously wanders off, phone in hand. Oh, he's just a worried dad. That's so sweet, though. Ah, got him. Just grabbed a whole mess of local history books. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine books in total. Stella sets a massive pile of books on the table and pulls up a chair. All right. This is going to be so much faster with the two of us here to help. Ah! I, I want to do a big stretch, but I can't. Or else it's going to be painful. <laughs> Got our snacks, our source documents. Let's get this research party started. Now, flip through historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow. through veins of scarlet. Do, 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 flip through that. Do, 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 flip through up. We'll start with this one. Historical buildings. Just the thought of reading a book like this would probably put most people to sleep. But you've got a mystery to solve. And to solve it, you need to know everything there is to know about this town. All right, tell me about the Scarlet Estate. I must know about it because it's uh, part of my family and I know nothing about it. The Scarlet Estate, inarguably the most striking piece of arch architecture in Scarlet Hollow, and the most elaborate and elegant estate in the region prior to the construction of the Baltimore in 1895. Andrew Jackson's Scarlet chose the location to be atop a hill in Scarlet Hollow's graphic center so that it might be seen from the town below. 
It remains a constant reminder of the family who's carved Scarlet Hollow from the wilderness and provided wealth and prosperity to its residents. Hmm. My shoulder's doing better. Thanks for asking. It's, um, I shouldn't have to wear the sling too much longer. Um, and it's starting to feel a lot better. So that's good. That definitely means that I won't have to wear it for much longer. Uh, ooh, there is so much to explore. Uh, the harem. Scarlet Memorial Hospital. First to use as a field hospital during the Civil War, it was named for Sil 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 Silas, Scarlet's eldest son. Silas? Silas. Who, uh, the person to the bloody conflict. B -b 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 it still stands at the end of what is now the residential district of Scarlet Hollow and has served the health of the community for over a hundred years. In the late 1800, the town prospered from a coal boom. Additions were built in, onto the house and it was opened as a change of air clinic, bringing the prestigious clientele from around the world. My reading is already sucking, but now uh, now that I'm actually reading book books, it's getting worse. <laughs> they believe the fresh mountain air would do them well, and Scarlet Hollow became a tourist destination of pa uh, patients of all afflictions. The clinic still operates to this day as a doctor's office and stands as a building of cultural significance. Okay, well, coal mines next. I guess we're just gonna go down the entire list. The original mining facility is no longer standing, having been destroyed in the collapse of 1918. Though the new facility, outfitted with all the cutting edge technologies of the industry in itself, a fine example of practical construction, the first generation of the mining camp was a true product of its time, and what few photographs exist are an interesting peek back at the different era. One can still visit the site of the original Scarlet Coal Mine, though all that remains are a few abandoned tunnels closed off to the public. Still no tragedies to be known. The Termine Homestead. Situated on the edge of the Scarlet Hollow farmlands, the Termine Homestead was one of the earliest settlements in the Scarlet Hollow, predating even the town's famous coal mines. For many decades, the Tremine family maintained the largest farm in Scarlet Hollow, but a break in the family led them to split the land in two, the homestead along with it. Despite the many changes made to the two halves of the Tremine homestead, in the subsequent decades, the original log structure are still visible and maintained to this day. They are undoubtedly the oldest. Uh, they are undoubtedly the oldest building left in standing in Scarlet Hollow. Only two more to go. <sighs> the church, one of the first buildings constructed by the Scarlet family, the Scarlet Hollow First Baptist Church, still sits in its original foundation. Though the building was reconstructed to accommodate the influx of citizens during the Scarlet Hollow coal boom in the late 1800s. Attendance has dwindled since the infamous mine collapse. The mine collapse? In 1918. And while the building may have fallen into despair, it simply vaulted ceilings, uh, ceilings still evoked awe to any who entered. And the town hall is all we have left. Silas Scarlet personally funded the town hall's construction as the first. Ma, 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 building in the then small community of the Scarlet Hollow. It has stood at the end of the main street since before the Civil War. It's a white columned in, in, in defend, withstanding the revenge of the revenge of the pe. I don't know why I try, I really don't. <laughs> In the, of the 1800s and continuing to stand to this day a stunning piece of architecture. 
After the towns of Scarlet Hollow switched to a dog, dog mare system. I don't know what a dog mare system is, but for a second I thought they were going to say the mayor was a dog. Of governance in 1920s, the buildings have been put to different, uh, different use. Though the upstairs still houses the town archives and a special ceremonial office for events with the mayor. So the mayor of Scarlet Hollow- Oh no, okay, so it did mean that it was a dog. It did mean that her- Okay. Is it Gretchen? Are you the dog? Are you the mayor? You close the book and put it back. I don't- I don't want to go through any more of these. That was really hard for me to read. Hopefully they found something. I think I'm done. Let's check in. <laughs> I think I'm all done. Let's check in. All right. I've grown with what Kanika's mom told us last night. I think we can rule out any natural disasters as, uh, as what brought the Ditchlings here. But not nuclear incidents. Looks like our state has a history with those. What about... Uh, what about y'all? Find anything? Cat! Do you want to be pet? I'm still working on Fufu. Before you can respond, a handsome black cat leaps onto the table. Stella quickly slams her book shut. Oh, hey, Pixel. You might want to close your book. He loves to rip any paper he can find. Mm. Don't worry, little guy. I didn't forget your treat. Pixel immediately goes to town on Stella's treat. Sorry if Pixel's bothering you. Hopefully she hasn't gobbled up any of our books. <laughs> oh, that's really cute. I love that. <laughs> I, I can't stand the thought that people might pay attention to anything that isn't him. Why do you let paper, uh, a paper shredder freely wander in the library? Nah, leave Pixel B. <laughs> you decide to leave Pixel B. The cat curls up on the table fast asleep. Alright. I'd better get back to the shelving. Let me know if y'all need anything. I hate the way they say y'all. Y'all is not something in my vocabulary, even though I live in Texas. It just sounds so awkward. Okay. Let's talk about the historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow. Let me look with Rosalina. Da -da -da -da. Whisper, do you think there's a cult here? Maybe, maybe. I do want to know more about Wayne. I do want to know more about Wayne. Do you think Wayne factors into any of this? I honestly wouldn't be shocked. There's something seriously wrong with him. Like, I can viscerally feel it in my guts. Maybe he's sick. Maybe that has something to do with what you say in the woods. I uh, saw in the woods. I don't know. I'd buy it. Explore book smarts. Da, 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 da. I don't know about Rosalina. Have you any luck with Rosalina? Uh, not yet. I knew a team would be a handful, but I didn't think it would happen overnight. I'll probably head out once you're all done checking uh, and checking on her usual haunts. That nuclear incident. Stella, what was that you were saying about nuclear incidents? You were talking about the Goldsboro thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, apparently this in the 60s, a B-52 carrying a live war warhead broke up midair and dropped a couple of bombs. Fascinating bit of history there. The first of the two bombs landed upright after its parachute got caught in a tree. Thankfully, it didn't go off. At the time, the government claimed that the bomb was unarmed, but it later came out that the only thing preventing a detonation was a single electrical switch, which failed to trigger on the descent. And 60 years later, the second bomb still hasn't been recovered. That does mean that, um... That does mean that there is a good chance of a nuclear incident. <laughs> Did you get good sleep? I hope the sleep was good. 
Um, we saw stuff in the woods and a guy died. That That's the most recap I can give you. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, it's condi uh, conditional explosive disintegrated in midair, but most of the nuclear material was made unrecoverable by flooding. If I remember correctly, they just buried it and sealed it up. I don't think disarming a bomb is part of our skill set. Yeah, I don't think that's part of our skill set. Absolutely not. Also, Goldsboro is almost 400 miles from here. I think we're good. I'm just saying, you never know with radiation. We actually know quite a bit. It just melts you. It doesn't make monsters. And a 60-year-old bomb isn't going to explode on its own hundreds of miles away and kill us here. You never know. There could always be a whole underground society of bomb-worshipping mutants just wanting to blow it up. I've missed this. Okay. I think maybe we should... Should we head back to the woods? That seems dangerous. We should look for Roslyn. Uh, Rosalina. Why don't we just help for look uh, look for Rosalina? If there's a missing kid in town, that's probably way more important than whatever uh, whatever else we'd be doing. Just to clarify, I don't think she's missing. She's just out with her friends and ignoring her poor, poor old man. Not that I don't appreciate your concern. I don't even know where we'd look aside from the old Maxwell place. What do teens even like to do these days? You don't have to worry about checking up on her there. I'm going there myself once I finish the shelving. Just let me know if you run into her while you're out. Maybe we should go to the mines. There was that collapse a while back, and a lot of people- Oh, that's right, I, I did read about that. <laughs> that's the one thing I read about. A lot of people died. Maybe the Ditchlings are here to warn us about something like that happening again. Mm. And maybe we'll luck out and run into Rosaline. Uh, Rosalina while we're looking around. Okay, good. And hopefully we can find out what happened to Wayne while we're at it. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm down, down. Uh, I get it. It doesn't really matter what I say here. We're gonna do, uh, no, no, no. I used to have a DM who railroaded me like, no, no, no. We're trying to be nice. I do want... I'm sure Tabitha is gonna love that we're snooping around. No, maybe Tabitha can help us out. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. she'd be super jazzed to see any of us snooping around the mines. I can't imagine what she'd do if we actually bothered her while she was trying to run the place. She does get a little grumpy when she is at work. Oh, that's where she works. I didn't realize that's where she worked. I feel like I should have known that by now. Three hours in. Mm -hmm. If you're okay exiting, uh, eating boxed mac and cheese, we can sneak around the mines, no problem. I'll make sure to keep an eye peeled for her. She won't even know we were there. Look at us going out. On, uh, uh, I missed this. <laughs> I missed it too. <laughs> I mean, it's not under the best circumstances, but I've been so wrapped up in running the store, I didn't realize how much I missed being able to hang out with you. Though this is something, uh, there is something missing. Reese. I don't know if it's a good idea to invite Reese into our endeavors. He is currently hurt. I think I really miss that dude. I can't believe how long it's been since we've seen each other. Have you seen him lately? No. I've tried to plant stuff, but he's been too sick. I didn't realize it was getting so bad. Poor guy. You know, we 
would just pop over and surprise him. He seemed excited to meet Lily. Maybe we'll finally get him to leave his little cave. Hell yeah, let's do it. I want to meet Reese. Alright, see you, Oscar. We'll let you know if we run into a Rosalina. Thanks, guys. I'll keep you posted. I hope Rosalina does not die. That's going to be really sad if that happens. And it's going to be really upsetting if I could prevent that. <laughs> uh, Reese's home stands at the edge of the forest walls. An isolated buffer cushioning the rest of the town from an unending wilderness. Unlike several of the other entries in the historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow, this one still looks mostly like it did in the books. Reese, it's Stella. I brought some buddies too. Hello, Reese. Shh, not so loud. You're not Reese. He's still sleeping. Can I help you with something? Hmm, the woman in the doorway stares directly into your eyes. You can practically feel her simmering irritation washing over you. Ah, Dr. Kelly. You're a doctor. That's good knowledge. We were wondering if it would be okay if Reese could come hang out. Nothing strenuous, we promise. I'm not gonna wake him up if he's sleeping. He probably needs it. Whatever you two have planned is probably beyond what he can manage right now anyways. Oh no, poor Reese. It's just been so long since we've, since either of us have gotten the chance to hang out with him. I'm sure he and Lily would get along super well too. I could lie. I could lie. I could lie. I'm gonna lie. This feels right. We're just going for a light walk. And I've heard such great things about your son. I'm only in town for a few more days and it'd be a shame if I didn't get the chance to meet him. Dr. Kelly looks you up and down and sighs. All right, you win. He usually, uh, he's usually feeling his best around mid-afternoon. Why don't you come over tomorrow? We can have some supper if you'll, uh, and you all, y'all can hang out for a bit. I don't promise that he'll be perky, but I'm sure it'll be bright, uh, it'll brighten his spirits to see you again. I'm sure he'll be happy to see you too, Lily. That would be great. I can bring a side dish, maybe deviled eggs. Does he still eat those? No, eggs are a little much for him. They don't settle well. You can leave the cooking to me. I know what he can handle. Okay, I'll bring soda then. That's not... Okay, yes, fine. You can bring soda. Nothing with caffeine. Ginger ale, preferably. Oh, and leave the dog at home. She might cheer him up. You know they have those therapy dogs in the house. No dogs! <laughs> Thanks so much, Dr. Kelly. We'll stop bothering you now. See you later. I'm pretty sure he really wants to see the dog, though. Dr. Kelly nods in acknowledgement and quickly shuts the door. The sound of several locks clicking in place can be heard from within. Mm. God, that woman makes me so nervous. I remember she used to be so nice and carefree when we were kids. She always had the best stickers when we ha had to get our shots. Maybe she's just stressed about Reese. Or maybe she's just not nice to kids. I don't know why I add words in there when they're not in there. <laughs> Either way, I guess it's just the three of us. You gonna drive? Yeah, sorry. I don't like the thought of going up there without a van. Cool. I'll take my shortcut then. It shouldn't take long for me to get there. You're welcome to tag along, Lily. Don't worry, I won't be offended if you'd rather ride with Kaniga. I'm sure you're probably sick of the woods. Either way works for me. Nuh-uh. I'm walking with Stella. I'm trying to romance her. <laughs> if I can. No, I'm not gonna push her on her car thing yet. I'm gonna walk with Stella. Besides, if she's walking, it's much safer for somebody to be with her. 
The woods are calm and serene compared to last night, though you can't help but get this feeling that danger lurks just beyond the trees. Hey, thanks for coming along with us. With Gretchen and me, I mean. I hope I haven't seemed too cold about everything that's happened last night. The truth is that I'm barely keeping myself together. I just don't know how to let it out. Duke died out there last night. And I can't stop thinking about, uh, thinking that it might have been my fault. If only I died for that flashlight. If only I didn't drag you into the woods. Stella pauses, searching for what to say. It's like there's this guilt boiling under my skin, but the only way I can process what's happening is by turning off the part of me that feels things. When I'm around other people, it's like I think of Duke dying as just a thing that happened. Like it's just a part of another video. Oh, Stella. Oh, Stella. Because if, I'm uh, because if I actually admit to other people that I feel something, then I'd have to admit to myself that what happened is my fault. Oh, Stella. T toughen up! <laughs> uh, da, da, da. I don't know how to break it to you, but if you didn't hesitate last night, we all might have gotten out of there alive. No, 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 not what I want to say. Hmm. Do I want to go with together or do I want to insist that it's not her fault? I'm gonna say what happened happened. And we can question our decisions and blame ourselves for what happened until the cows come home. Or we can move forward together. Thanks, Lily. You're right. I should be better at taking my own advice. I'm glad we could talk about this, though I can't imagine what it'd be like to go through something like that last night. Alone. Hello? The conversation comes to a dramatic halt with you, Stella and Gretchen all whirling around to face the source of the sound. Oh, it's a birdie! Well, calm down, girl. It's just a bird. The same probably goes for the two of us. <laughs> I guess we're all a little on edge. Let's hurry to the mines. It should be much further. Just don't have me pick a direction, because I will pick the wrong direction. Kanika uh, uh, casually leans against her van, and you and Stella emerge from the woods. Hey. <laughs> Y'all have a good walk? Mm, yeah, it was great. I mean, not that you were missing out or anything. You didn't run into any of those creatures, did you? Nope. Just a bird. Just a beautiful little red cardinal. That makes sense. They're probably nocturnal. I don't know if I should feel relieved or disappointed. But we're all here. What's the plan? I guess we'll just go talk to people? I guess so. I... <laughs> I wish I could zoom in on this lovely dog in the background. I love that. I should probably be on the lookout of duty. I'm a bit of her persona non Ranta of the mind. Mm hmm Tabitha? Yeah, I might have tried sneaking in to talk to her a time or two too many. And Gretchen makes it extra hard to be sneaky. We're probably less likely to get a cod if only one of us is snooping around down there. I vote for it to be Kanika. I'm not a sneaky person. <laughs> and then she's gonna be upset. Like, Tabitha's gonna be upset at me for just showing up if I get caught. I call it dibs. I love. I, I, no, no. I, I'm not. Talking to people scares me. <laughs> that That's accurate. <laughs> Stella's on lookout duty and only one of us is going in. What's the third person? Yeah, what's the third person doing? That's a good question. Stella's on lookout duty and only one of us is going in. What's the third person doing? You know those cheesy rom-coms where someone wears an earpiece and they're on their first date? Well, do you have some kind of surveillance ring in the back of your van? That I did not know about. What? No. 
I have a pair of earbuds with really good mic. We could just do a group call. Hmm. Okay, that sounds like a great idea. Again, I'm not really good at sneaking. So, Kinika should probably be the one to go in there. We definitely don't want Tabitha finding me either. Talking to people- uh, also talking to people scares me. You should do it, Kanika. Um... I need to step in like this, but I really think you're the best choice here, Lily. I didn't want to. I'm not good at this. I'm not good at sneaking. Here's the earbuds I mentioned earlier. Kanika hands you a pair of earbuds. We could feed you questions if you get stuck, and Stella can give you a heads up if Tabitha is headed your way. Dang, I've missed doing this sort of thing with you. You're so thorough. Ah, thanks, I do my best. I guess we should part ways and start the call, yeah? Mm -hmm. Stella and Kanika break off, leaving you alone at the entrance to the mines. Your phone buzzes. Yeah. Can you hear us? Try saying something. <laughs> something. <laughs> Still, and can you could chuckle in the other end of the line? All right, cool. Nothing to do now but enter the work site. You pass through the unlocked fence and enter the property of the Scarlet Hollow Mine. All right, time to not get caught. Time to not get caught. You pass through the unlocked fence and enter the property of the Scarlet Hollow Mine. All right, I'm in. All right, Morpheus, good to know. Approach the nearest group of miners. Go straight to the mine mm, to find your cousin. I thought we were trying to avoid our cousin. I thought we were trying to avoid her. You approach the nearest group of miners, a blonde woman, a broad-shouldered man, and an old-timer. Their uniforms identify them as Harrison, Davis, and Zach. You got a reason to be bothering us? Uh... Yeah, I'll start off with- I'll introduce myself. No, wait, should I not introduce myself? They might tell Tabitha. <laughs> Do you know anything about a guy named- mm. Wayne? Yeah, I'm most curious about Wayne. Yeah, we knew him. He was such a cut up. Missed that dude. What happened to him? The miners shift for a moment, uncomfortably glancing at one another. Isn't that the guy you said was, um. He's gone, that's all that matters. Press them. What happened to him? What are you, some sort of cop? on the down low, but I'm working for a competitor, an unusinized competitor. We're thinking of buying Miss Scarlet out of the mines. Mm, yeah, I'm a cop, and I'm, lo uh, I'm looking into what happened. No! Uh, we'll go with this one. We'll go with that one. Really, I'd kill for a few more days off a year. Yeah, I hear those union boys get paid sick leave. I wouldn't mind some of that. Uh, I don't buy it. They're already looking for people to lay off and I don't intend to be one of them. Love it here. They're laying people off. That's the first I've heard of it. I guess once you lose your job, you're probably not gonna stick around very long. Tabitha is an excellent boss, very professional, and runs a tight ship. That's the honest truth. Don't you go mind, uh, minding what happens to folks who left their posts. Mm. So I probably should have just said I was her cousin. I might have got some more answers if I said that. Oh well. Da -da 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 -da. See anything weird lately? The miners look you up and down. Weird how? 
Weird, like, animal sightings. Weird noises coming from the woods. People are getting sick. People getting sick. Like, more than usual. Nope, nothing like that. I feel fit as an ox. We have a good working condition in the mine, and our health is wholly looked after. Any noises coming from the woods, then? Not a peep. We're underground most of the day, though. You know, I heard something unusual the other night. Though, it might have been an owl or something. But it didn't sound right. It was an owl, you're just not used to the local wildlife yet. Do you run into any weird animals? Lately? Nope. You been talking to the townie? The one the boss gave a lifetime ban to? Wait, are they talking about me? <laughs> Yeah, she's like a Bigfoot YouTuber or something. Her videos are actually pretty good. Yeah. That's me, alright. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> but you know, now that I think about it, it's pretty weird I haven't been seeing many animals at all lately. Used to be I'd see all sorts of critters. Now it's mostly birds. This is your first year up here, ain't it? Just not used to the season changing. All the animals are hibernating, that's all. I don't know, she's got a point. I've been here five years now and it's never been like this before. Mm. Maybe it's the global warming then. I think they're calling it climate change now. All right. Got a couple of other questions. So I met this guy on the bus. <laughs> Just ask about Tabitha. The miner stared at you, distrust in their eyes. Harrison chews uh, her sandwich slowly. She works hard. Look, we've been over this. Tabitha is an excellent boss, very professional, and runs a tight ship. That's the honest truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, I trust you. I trust you. I probably should have let off without the cousin. Instead of being sneaky. Actually, that's all, thanks. Bye. Oh wait, no, I should have mentioned the guy in the bus. Some of his friends were here. Oh, I, for I forgot about that. All right. See, I could go see Tabitha. But if I went and saw Tabitha, Stella and Kanika might not be very happy about that. I'm gonna approach another group of miners first, and then we'll go see Stella, maybe. You stop in your tracks, a shiver running up your spine, as an unfortunately familiar voice calls out to you. Why is your face covered, sir? shouldn't be here. It's dangerous. Attack him! Uh, was that you in the garden this morning? You don't have to be afraid of me. Stay home. Wait for the week to end. Don't keep putting yourself in the path of danger. This is all I ask. Before you can say another word, the figure is gone. Hey, Lili, are you still there? We've just been getting static from you. It is a ghost. Oh god. <laughs> Wayne got that jump on me. Uh. Don't mind me, our new friend just stopped to say hello. Oh, I thought I was. I saw you talking to someone down there. Are you okay? He told me to stay at the estate for the week. Hmm. I wonder why. He told me to stay at the estate for the rest of the week, that I'd be safe there. Why would he tell me that? What the hell is that supposed to mean? He must have been threatening you, right? The plot thickens. I don't, I don't think it was a threat. I don't think it's a threat at all. I need to talk to Tabitha about this. 
She deserves to know that creep is lurking around the mines. Totally get that. If you're sure, tipping her off might make it harder to talk to everyone, uh, everyone else. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin my already not great relationship with Tabitha. I want to find Tabitha. You make your way to the trailer in the middle of the camp. Mm. I could leave the call on. I'm gonna tell them. Hey guys, I'm gonna hang up real quick. I don't want Tabitha to think I'm spying on her. Yeah. You disconnect from the call before opening the door. Yeah, I'd rather not th have her think that I'm spying. I'm not trying to ru ruin my relationship with Tabitha. You enter Tabitha's trailer and find her sitting at her desk, her head buried in her hands. What are you doing here? Who's Wayne and why does he keep following? I, I, I can just leave if you want. I mean, it's an option, I can leave. I didn't like how we left things off this morning. Just wanted to spend some time with you. Someone's been following me. I need you to take what's going on seriously and need you to take me seriously. I can, I can just leave if you want. No, you're already here. Might as well tell me what's so important. We'll go with this one. No, I want to know who Wayne is. Who's Wayne? He keeps following me. Tap at the size. I don't know who you think has been following you, but it's not him. If you're going around asking questions about Sam Wayne, you're probably going to hear some rumors. Sam was friendly with me. He even came around to the estate a few times and a lot of uh, workers here just can't seem to get over it. He disappeared and despite what a lot of people seem to be insinuating, I don't know what happened to him. I don't even know if he's alive. Whatever, it's fine. I know it's easy to blame the mean boss for that sort of thing, but I digress. If someone's following you, you should just stay in the estate where it's safe. Uh, it's pretty funny, you just told me the same thing. If it isn't Wayne, then who's been following me? Who is it? He's been wearing the man's jacket. I should probably let her know that somebody's been standing outside. I don't think the estate's safe. He's watching me from outside my room. Look at this boot print I found in the garden facing my window. You showed Tabitha the photo you took earlier. That's, yeah, that's a little unsettling. But I assure you, the estate, estate is well guarded against intruders. I won't let anything happen to you this week, I promise. Look, if it'll make you feel better, I can ask some of the men about him. I doubt much will come of it though. Not many employees want to get caught tattling to their boss. Let's talk about the mine collapse, if there's a potential mine collapse. I think there might be a mine collapse soon. The creatures I saw last night are supposed to be some sort of potent, er, uh, portent of doom. I'm just doing whatever I can to keep people safe. Look, I get it, I really do. Stella has a knack for spinning people into hysteria over shadows. But the only credible threat to the mines right now is me not being able to do my job. Coal is a tough industry. Lily, I'm sure you know. The, seam, uh, the seams in these hills aren't exactly untapped either. This mine has been operated for almost 200 years. It'll run dry at some point, maybe even in my lifetime. But I'll do whatever I have to if it means this place lasts just a little longer. Over 100 people work for me, and for each of those people, this is it. 
This is the best job that you're ever gonna get. I don't like doing layoffs. I don't like doing cuts. I don't like seeing my childhood home crumble around me. But every day I get up and do what I uh, do what needs to be done to save this town from ruin. Not that I believe anything when it comes to Stella and monsters, but who cares if you two saw a harbinger of doom? I see that every day. Okay, we'll leave it at that then. Look, I'm kind of swamped right now. I was actually getting ready for a big meeting when you walked in. But if you want, you can just wait here for an hour or so and I can swing back when I'm done and pick you up. That kind of sounds nice. Just don't go around bothering my men. Don't move a muscle. Don't so much as make eye contact with them. They're supposed to be working. I'll see you then. And Tabitha leaves the room. As soon as she's gone, you place Kanika's earbuds back in your ear and redial the group. Hey, is everything good? Yeah, everything's actually great. How many options we got? Tabitha was actually really helpful. Let's meet back up. But I still have some questions for her men. Mm, I think I got probably all I'm gonna get for them for now. So let's meet back up. Oh, but that does mean that I'm just gonna like leave. I didn't think about that really. That's incredibly surprising. No use sticking around here. Uh, head back outside to continue your investigation. Head back outside to regroup with Stella and Kanika. I probably should have like texted her or left a note at least. As you leave Tabitha's office, you take a moment to get your bearings only to be interrupted by a sudden movement out of the corner of your eye. Oh. Oh! That, that, I think that's Rosalina. A girl carrying a bundle of, of snack pops through a hole in the fence and disappeared over the crest of a hill. Hey, I think I just saw Rosalina. Wait, really? What is she doing here? Clearly she's doing a delinquency. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. We should call Oscar. We should definitely call Oscar. That's the first person we should tell. Let's handle that after we catch up with her. You rush over the hill and... Oh, are we going in there? We are, aren't we? Um... What is that up in that top corner? <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, the sounds of active mining fading into the distance. Rosalina is nowhere to be found, but dusty footprints point towards a nearby mine. She didn't. I guess the old Maxwell place doesn't cut it as a secret hangout spot these days. But the Shaw Mine? That place was shut down like a hundred years ago. After a collapse that killed over a hundred people. And here I thought Stella was going to be the one to drag me into an abandoned coal mine. Hmm. I guess we should go after her, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the responsible thing to do. Let's head in before someone gets hurt. Whoa, you sure you want to tag along, Neeks? Lily and I can handle this on our own. Yeah, I'm sure. As much as I hate confined spaces, I'm not about to let Rosalina get hurt in there. Even if it means I have to go underground. Got it. Slightly claustrophobic. Stella and Kanika disappear into the mines before you follow. You briefly wonder if you should let Tabitha know about this. I think we probably should. You pull out your phone and dial your cousin. What is it? You know I'm in a meeting. <laughs> Hang up on her. A kid just snuck into the Shaw mine? I figured you should know. What, are you serious? What do these things keep happening to me? Whatever, I'll head over there as soon as I can. Just stay where you are and wait for me, all right? God, I don't even know why I'm trying to reason with you. It's not like you'll listen. <laughs> 
Mm, I really want to go in there. I called you as a courtesy, but I'm not going to wait around for you. I will happily wait. I do not want to go in there. I don't want to lie to her. But I also don't want to leave Stella in there by herself. Oh. I'm gonna lie. I'm gonna lie and hope that she doesn't find out. No need to get snarky, I'll wait. I just, mm, good. Tabitha hangs up on you. You take a deep breath and follow your friends into the mine. Tabitha will understand, maybe. We'll just lie about it some more. We'll just do more lying. The inside of the mine is warmer than you'd expect. The air is thick and wet. The ceilings, uh, ceiling hangs much lower than you are. Tall, I should have, I should have just waited. Forcing you and your companions to hunch over. Your legs bent in a painful squat as you begin to navigate into the mine co uh, maze corridors. Hey, you made it. I told you she would. For a second there, Kanika thought you were making a beeline for Tabby. Mm. I actually kind of did. I actually... I don't want to lie to you. I actually kind of did. I called her. Are you kidding me? I don't know how long it's going to take for this to uh, for this to get through to you, Lily. But that woman is not to be trusted. That is my cousin you're talking about. Well, what matters is the gang's all here. We'll find Rosalina in no time. Yeah, no. Uh, it's kind of her mine area so she needs to know sorry the deeper you progress into the mines the heavier the air becomes cold dust hangs in the thick clouds around you even though this place was abandoned over a century ago jesus it's cramped down here does anyone else does his chest feel tight yeah abandoned mines are always more claustrophobic than people expect them to be and this one's real bad but you know because the child miners there was children miners down there or should I say the minor miners Kanika visibly shudders okay I'm not superstitious but if there's one way to make sure you get haunted it's cracking jokes about dead children laborers while walking on their graves what can I say? I do my best to tempt the spirits wherever I go. I actually snuck down here a few times to try and get some good footage. Part of my ghost hunting phase. Jesus, Stella. The things you do for your viewers. Did you find anything? I wish. If any place in C Scarlet Hollow was actually haunted, it'd be this mine. Hands down. But all I got was dust in my lungs and a couple of false alarms. Stella pauses, a sound rushing overhead. Oh my god, what's that? The mine is going to collapse and we're all gonna die here, aren't we? Nope, that disaster just isn't big enough. Stella sighs long and, uh, longingly. That's just how wind sounds down here. It sounds so disappointed. It just brings back memories of last four, uh, last four in these depths. Every time I thought I'd finally found a spook, a spooky ghost. There wound up to being a very unghostly explanation. Like local wildlife, for instance. Stella turns and flash, uh, her flashlight up towards an alcove uh, overhead. Look at the little bats! Those guys got me real good last time I was here alone. Oh my god. There are bats down here? I'm gonna get rabies, aren't I? I'm gonna get rabies and die in a mine collapse. Well, no bouquet, Meeks. Yeah, sorry, I'm just a little on edge. 
Kanika stopped mid-sentence by a thunderous knock echoing from the de uh, from deeper in the mine. Okay, what was that? That was... I have no idea what that was. Did that sound like knocking to you guys? It sounds like rocks shifting somewhere deeper in the mines. We should be careful. Yeah, we'll say that one. It sounds like rocks shifting somewhere deeper in the mines. We should be careful. Could be, or maybe it's Tommy knockers. <laughs> They're an old Cornish myth named for the knocking sound you can sometimes hear in the miner mines right before a collapse. Stella. Stella, that is not funny. Some say the knocks are a warning, while others say it's the spirits themselves bringing down the mines. Not helpful. I'd love to spend some extra time poking around down there. Maybe it's got something to do with the mystery. The three of you are interrupted by a second, much less distant sound of a can being popped open. Okay, now that wasn't a Tom, Tommy knocker. It came from this way, follow me. Follow Stella. You and Kanika follow Stella into the, further into the mines. One, two, three, four, five, five children. Five children. Yeah, five children. You breathe a sigh of relief as a tight passageway gives gives way to small cavern. A group of teens turn and stare at you with annoyance. What the hell are you all are you doing in here? What the hell are you doing in here? You creeps? Are you stalking us? Yeah, creeps. I just said that, Alexis. If I wanted an echo, I'd yell into the Grand Canyon. Oh, God. Teenagers? Mm. Those teens, let them have their fun. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Are you gonna make sure you don't hurt yourselves? What are you guys even doing down here? This is the most miserable place I've been in my entire life. If I wanted an echo, I'd yell into the Grand Canyon. What are you? Oh. Damn. Damn, I could be so rude to these kids right now. Hmm. Your dad's looking for you, Rosalina. Your dad's looking for you, Rosalina. And who the hell are you exactly? That's Lily's Tabby's cousin. I can't believe your dad sent people to follow you. That's messed up. I think that qualifies as harassment. You're right, Becca. This is messed up. I don't need him telling me where I can be. You could at least check in so he knows you're not dead. He loves you and worries about you. He's really not asking for much. Well, you kids have school tomorrow anyways. It's fall break. And we're not kids. Yeah, we're teens. Oh god. It's a phase. You guys will grow out of it. It's fine. Are those canned strawberry and margaritas? Where did you even get those? Most of the teens avoided eye contact. The quiet ones in the back tries to melt into the cavern wall. Oh no, I know that isn't you, Miles. It had better not be you. Oh god. Sorry, Miles. Yeah, whatever, it's me. What are you even doing here? Becca's right. Sounds to me like you're stalking and harassing me and that, all that. You're supposed, you're supposed to be mind, uh, mind, mind, minding the stuff. That's how they got the margarita stuff! It's not like anyone ever comes in on Tuesdays. And mom's there, so it's fine. Eyes dart uncomfortably around the cavern as Kanika tears into her brother. It's not fine. It's extremely not fine. Why do I always have to be the responsible one? Do you know what I would give to be as carefree as you? I left school so you would have a chance to live your life. And this is what you're doing with it? What would dad think if you could see the, this? Stealing booze from the family store to dig around in an abandoned mine. Dad's Do we all have dead parents? Dead parents. Dead mom. <laughs> the food like in Texas is fantastic. <laughs> I love the food in Texas. <laughs> it's 
very good, very hearty. <laughs> Who cares if we're having canned margaritas somewhere nobody's supposed to be bother us? Don't try to twist this around on your sister. You're stealing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm, mm hmm So many options. These kids want to make bad decisions. That's on them. This is what you do around, on and around here. Maybe the ditchlings were kind of inevitable. We could scare them out of the hole. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. I I don't need to be parenting her brother. That's not for me. We'll do this one. If this is what y'all do for fun around here, maybe the ditchlings were kind of inevitable. Who's y'all? I'm not having any fun. I'm having the opposite of fun. Oh my god, stop talking about us like we aren't here. Yeah, we can hear you. Alexis, don't butt in. I'm trying to make a point. Stop being so mean to Alexis. My dad is a foreman at the at the continuous mining facility, and he says the only reason they stopped uh, using this tunnel is because there wasn't enough coal left. I thought your dad was a charge hand. No, Alexis. He got promoted last month. And he says this place is totally safe and we can hang out here anytime we want. Tabitha, Tabitha's face says otherwise. Correct. Your father was a foreman at the continuous mining facility. We'll see if he even has a job tomorrow morning. What? Oh, shit. I like that we don't get a name from him. He's just Beanie Boy. <laughs> Oh, hey, Tabby. Kanika sighs. It's probably for the best that she's here. Do none of you understand what a borderline, uh, boarded up mine entrance is supposed to mean? It means it's closed, condemned, not fit for human use. Oh, come on. This place was sturdy. Check it out. Do not hit that. That dude gave me a heart attack. The teen with the beanie jumps up and slaps the steward of the on the ceiling. Oh, that. That knocking we were hearing earlier. Probably. Oh my god, Zane, cut it out. You're embarrassing us. I'm sorry for Zane's behavior. I don't think he realizes how extremely 8th grade it is to jump up and hit things. Okay, somebody needs to chill the fuck out, Becca. You are not as cool as you think you are right now. Uh, no offense, Rosalina. None. Oh. Uh, okay, so she's in 8th grade and they're all older than she is. None taken. Other 8th graders are totally immature. Not like you, Rosalina. You're chill. And smart, too. Enough. The damage is already done. Now leave. I'm tired of people in this town dragging my cousin headlong into danger. I can't believe I actually agreed with Tabitha about anything, but this is the worst place I've ever been in my entire life, and I would like to see the sun again before I die. Oh, come on, you guys. Maybe it's not a big deal. We used to do dangerous stuff all the time, and I still do dangerous stuff now. I mean, I don't like this particular situation, what with the whole ditchling thing, but outside of that, who are we to tell them where they can and can't hang out? It, it's it's condemned. They can't hang out here. I don't know who you think you are in this situation, Stella, but I own this mine. It is entirely within my rights to tell them to leave, much like it is entirely within my rights to tell you to leave. Was your lifetime banned from my mind not as clear as a message for you? <sighs> Hell yeah, Tabitha. Terror sad 20-something to shreds. Hey, I'm defending you, and I'm not sad. Where'd you get that idea? I, I hope she hit. I'm not praying on the downfall of children. Not par I'm not praying on the downfall of children. But 
I hope she like sprains her ankle on the way out of this rocky area. She has something coming to her. I'm just saying. <laughs> a running clickbaity YouTube channel where you run around in the woods chasing nothing is extremely sad. So she's sad. So what? Give it a few years, you'll be sad too. <laughs> the passage of time is in, uh, <laughs> inaccessible. Look, we just wanted to give Rosalina a good time. Her home life sucks right now. Yeah, tell him about what, where you have to sleep, Rosalina. We've been living in the library for the past couple of weeks. Dad says we can't stay at our, our house. They've got a hot, uh, hot plate and a couple coats in one of the back rooms. It's actually a pretty sick setup. No, it isn't, Zane. <laughs> Rosalina deserves better. I don't care about your home life. If you're gonna to do your under uh, un underage drinking, go do it in the woods. Just get off my- don't do it in the woods. Don't do it in the woods. Tabitha. Look, Rosalina, I'm sure Oscar has a good reason for all that. He's a good guy and he cares about you. He thinks our house is haunted. Oh. Okay, maybe maybe he doesn't have a good reason for it. Wait, what? <laughs> and I should care because because it's such a bullshit excuse. I bet he couldn't afford it anymore and is lying to you to save your face. Uh, to save face. What a coward. Becca, I don't think you can, like, say that about other people's families. Isn't that, like, bullying or something? Shut up, Zane. Back up. He's, he says it's haunted? I can't believe he didn't mention it to me. I could investigate. There's no ghost, Stella. It would be cool if there was, but Becca's right. I just wish he would be honest with me and tell me what's going on. It's like he doesn't think I can handle it. Like, I'm still a little kid. Ugh. You're all children, and none of you realize how good you have it. Back in the days, each and every one of you would be pulling 12-hour shifts in this exact mine. If it weren't for child labor laws, the five of you might have some actual character. <laughs> exactly. Rosalina is not, the mature, as, uh, not that mature anyways. She still sleeps with a stuffed- I sleep with a stuffed animal! Well, it's not really a stuffed animal. It's a, it's a piece of like meat. <laughs> but it's basically the same thing. I like sleeping with something in my arms. It's cool. That doesn't mean she's not mature. I still have pork chop, you know. I rest my case. Wait, what did you say about child labor? Oh, okay, okay. Is there anything I can say to put Becca in her place? Cause. This freedom, not surprised. Uh, uh, you're right, Oscar shouldn't treat you more like adult. I'm sure Oscar is doing this to protect you. I don't know where I on this. This is between you and your dad, and the two of you should talk about it anywhere that isn't here. <laughs> Damn, there's nothing for Becca. Mm. How do you know there isn't a ghost? No, I'm not going to weigh in on this. It's not my place. I'm not going to weigh in on this. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, if Rosalina's house is haunted, we should break in and, and like, ghost bust or something. Sounds pretty rad to me. <laughs> Whatever gets you to Lincoln's out of my mind. Yeah, why aren't they ha hanging out at her house? If it's a if nobody's living there right now, then why aren't they there? Oh my God, Zane, you can't ghost bust if there isn't a ghost. Also, Rosalina, Rosalina lives there. She can't break into her own house. There's no ghost that you know of. I bet we could figure out how to bust it if it's actually real. And if it isn't real, well, problem solved. You know, Rosalina, you could always stay over at my house until Stella's ghost busts your place. We have a finished basement, uh, finished basement with a pull-out couch. Oh, that's so sweet. Why are we talking about this like it's a thing? It's not a thing. There's no ghost. I don't care. I can't believe I've wasted this much time trying to argue with children. 
I'm wish uh, I'm washing my hands of this and calling the cops. Feel free to leave before they show up. You hear them? That? We're leaving. I suggest the rest of you kids leave the empty mine before someone gets black lung or gets crushed by rocks or meets any of one of many terrible fates people tend to meet in abandoned mines. Yeah, please let's get out before something happens. I do not want to be trapped in the mines. Kanika is interrupted by a pair of thunderous knocks. Now that's probably a Tommy, a Tommy whatever it's called again. That wasn't me, I swear. Then what was it? Come on, Stella. Didn't you have a whole list of perf uh, perfectly natural explanations for scary mind noises? It's Tommy knockers, for sure. I know this isn't why we came down here, but we've got to check it out. Stella. I know, I know, but weird stuff's been happening around here. The past few days, what if this is our chance to get an actual solid lead? The stakes couldn't be higher. Do you have no sense of self-preservation? I want you out of here, Stella. Well, come on, Tabby. You can come along, too. It'll be fun. Wait, isn't she supposed to be in a meeting right now? If you guys are going after some spooky, uh, some uh, something spooky, count me in. No, nobody is going deeper into the mines. Nobody is staying in the mine. You're all leaving. Please listen to Tabitha before my heart gives out. It'll be fun, Neeks. It will not. Hmm, I have a feeling. Oh. You're right. Wait a second, where'd three of you run off to? Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Wow, Kanika, maybe if you weren't still scared of the dark or whatever, you would have noticed them sneaking off. Maybe if you weren't a little bitch. <laughs> I noticed them sneaking off like I've been zoning out the whole time we've been here. Mm. They must have squeezed through the child-sized tunnel. Dang. I've always wondered where that goes. I've never been able to get these. I've never been able to get these hips through there. Tell me more. <laughs> Stella, stop sneaking into my minds. <laughs> Please, I'm literally begging you. If only, uh, if only all the tunnels down here were wide enough for adults, we could already be done with this little mess. But no. There just have to be remnants from a bygone era. Ugh. Didn't you just talk about how child labor was good old days? Um, uh, was the good old days a minute ago? I was trying to get you to leave my mind. <laughs> Look at that little face, though. <laughs> no, that little shit-eating grin. Well, I mean, she's not smiling, but still. <laughs> Becca's head pops out from the tunnel's entrance. We're not about to let you come in here and ruin our good time. The mine is safe. I've been here a million times. Yeah, if Becca says we're safe, then we're totally safe. I just, whatever, come on, you two. I know a cool spot this way. Okay, I think we, I, I think I know where that tunnel rejoins the rest of the mines. Oh, Tabitha speaking. I thought she was speaking for a second. I thought uh, Kaneko was speaking. I was like, how did you know that? I'll go look for them. And I want each and every one of you to take note of the fact that I'm doing that. If those idiots get themselves lost and die, I'm not letting the family sue me into the ground. Are all of those really your priority? Are are those really your priorities right now? Yeah. Do you have a problem with that? I want the rest of you out of my mind, except for you, Lily. I'm not letting you out of my sight. Yeah, sure. I could never fit in that tunnel, anyways. They have crossed a barrier that I cannot. So many times here is up. So my time. Yeah, get, get out of here, Zane. But only because Stella promised me a ghost hunt tomorrow. Whatever, I still have to do my dailies. Anyways, and the severe uh, service down here sucks. I will happily escort these two knuckleheads out. So that means the three of us. Technically, the four of us are going. No, you are not about to weasel your way into this, Stella. Oh, come on, Tabby. I've been down here a ton. I could totally help out. 
tab at the size. Uh, there's no getting rid of you, is there? Fine. I won't waste my time arguing. Mm. I've read a lot of stories about cave rescues. Cave rescuers needing their own rescues. Should we get some professionals down here? Mm. That, that actually might be smart. It might be smart to at least let somebody know we're exploring down here. Well, I guess technically... Nikados. Mm. Ooh, if I did that, I would probably earn some points with Stella. But I would lose stuff from Tabitha. Ooh. I could just book smarts it. I could just book smarts it. Who would just book smarts it? And technically, Stella has done stuff to deserve it. She's trespassing right now. We'll do book smarts. I've read a lot of stories about cave rescuers needing their own cave rescuers. Are we biting off more than we can chew? Should we get some professionals down here? I am a professional. I'd also prefer to resolve this issue without word getting out, if possible. Again, I don't want to deal with angry parents trying to sue me for their own negligence. Inspiring. Oh, don't worry, Luli. It'll be fun and safe. I'm sure that's exactly what you told her last night. And we know how that ended. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm coming along, but I don't want to stress that I'm- uh, I want to stress that I'm against my will and better judgment. I'm coming with you, but it's because I want to come along. Not because you're making me. No, I just go with Alroy. Right. Sure. Let's not linger any longer than we have to, shall we? Want me to take Gretchen with me? I don't know if it'll be easier to cover more ground without her. Yeah, that's probably for the best. I don't want to repeat. Uh, I don't want to repeat of last night. And who knows if we'll have to climb anything. Oh, she looks so sad, though. So I'll see you on the other side, hopefully soon. Favorite Texan food? I don't, I don't know if I have a favorite just like Texan food. It's hard to place what's a Texan food, but I know I eat a lot of steak and I like that. And I know that Texas people like their meat. For sure we won't be long. Cool, can't wait to bust some ghosts tomorrow. If we live, there's no guaranteeing it. <laughs> uh, Kanika, Miles, Zane head towards the entrance of the mines, leaving you, Tabitha, and Stella to find the remaining teens. All right, no dawdling. We should be able to catch up with them if we go this way. You and Stella exchange a glance, and Tabitha ventures forward. Venture deeper into the mines. As the three of you move deeper into the mines, you hear echoes of a conversation bouncing across the walls. Becca? Why are we doing this again? I thought you thought Tabitha was, like, really cool. Why are you trying to get her all mad? <laughs> I hope that makes her happy. Uh... We're doing this because Tabitha is really cool. She doesn't let anyone boss her around, so we can't just let her boss us around. Oh, you hear that, Tabby? Someone thinks you're cool. I can't believe she used to hang out with a nobody like Stella. Oh, that's so sad. Hey. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think Stella's kind of cool. Her videos are really neat. Oh, come on. She doesn't even have a sponsor. What kind of a YouTuber doesn't have a sponsor? I... <laughs> You're hitting hard here. <laughs> I mean, not yet, but... I'm, I'm in talks with meat rice. What is meat rice? And I make plenty from ads and donations. Hmm. You still have meat rice? That's a big deal. Yeah. 
Yeah, dang, still. And Pete Rice, that's a big deal. They're on, like, every big podcast. Thank you. Thank you. It feels like a really big step for the channel. I just wish Becca hadn't said all the things she said tonight. She was just mean. It had nothing to do with you. Yeah, I no, I don't like her. I don't like her at all. She's kind of a little prick. She is, she's just mean. It had nothing to do with you. You've seen how she treated everyone tonight except Tabitha. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm surprised you don't have thicker skin about this, Stella. You never struck me as someone who'd let other people's opinion bother you. If you did, I wouldn't have tried so hard to keep you off my property. Well, I know you don't mean it. <laughs> Agree to disagree. Hmm. How does it feel to have a teen girl think you're cool, Tabitha? I mean, it's something, right? I feel nothing about it. The opinions of children don't interest me. I don't know. You kind of hesitated there. You're reading into things that aren't there. Just because your livelihood revolves around what people think of you doesn't mean I care what people think of me. Congratulations on your sponsor, though. I wish they were gossiping. I, I, I'm just glad they're not gossiping about me. Yeah, I know they're just teens, but some of that stuff stung. <laughs> another knock, closer, interrupts your thoughts, followed by another, followed by another. Is it just me, or is that knocking coming from the same direction as those kids? It's not just you. Okay, that knocking is starting to freak me out. Calm down, Rosalina. It's just a mind sound. Did did you guys see that? No, it was just a shadow. There's no reason to freak out. I saw it. Shut up. There's nothing down here. Stop trying to scare me. Uh, that sounds just... Uh, that sounds just the active mind echo through the hallways, right? sure the tools they went through is going to meet back up with us Ooh, tommy knockers <laughs> those poor kids no, coming down here was a bad idea there are so many answers i could choose so many answers they better get grounded after this mm. what do they see yeah, I'll do that one. Are we sure the tunnels they went through is going to meet back up with us? Yes, I'm familiar with all the old maps of this place. There should be a central chamber not too far from where everything joins back up. Okay. What did they see? Tommy knockers. It's not Tommy knockers. They're probably just jumping at their own shadows. You said yourself, Stella, as soon as they got out of our sight, their bravado would vanish into a puff of smoke. It's probably just rocks falling somewhere deep in the mines, which is also bad for obvious reasons. Those poor kids. I have no sympathy for their terror. They have brought this upon themselves for trespassing in my mind. I'm sure they're just upset that you came down here as you are. We're getting closer. Let's keep moving. As you press deeper into the mines, the knocking grows more frequent. It's still distant, but it's much louder than before. The tunnel ends abruptly in front of you. A century-old ladder is the only way forward. In the darkness beyond, you can still hear the echoes of terrifying teen terrified teens. They're panicked, arguing, bouncing down the pitch-black corridors. And here we are, the tunnel they crawled through passes through the chambers below. It shouldn't be hard to find them once we're down there. I've never been this far in. Congratulations, Stella. You got what you wanted. Tabitha crawls up the ladder and disappears over its edge. All right, let's do this. Bye. Stella hoists herself over the edge and begins to climb down. Follow them into the pit. You'll walk it to the ladder and climb on down. I hope the ladder doesn't break. 
the caves don't collapse. And we don't see something that's gonna kill one of the children. Or Tabitha, or, oh. Could I, could I get her killed? Could I get Stella or Tabitha killed on accident? Oh, I hope not. I'm pretty sure this is the way back, come on. Pretty sure. I thought you'd been down here before. Okay, maybe I didn't get this far in, but whatever. It doesn't matter, I definitely remember the way out. Probably I don't want to be down here anymore. I think it was actually this way. Oh, shut up, no one even wanted you to come with us anyways. Becca. It would be accident, I care for these two. <laughs> it would totally be an accident. <laughs> I'm trying to romance one of them. <laughs> they're close all right. Good thing uh, they're so damn loud. It sounds like they're really lost. The voices around you, those of teens and your companions sound odd, distant. Step forward. There's something in the darkness before you that's much louder, though. You don't hear it. I hear it. Don't say I don't hear it. I hear it. You don't hear it, but you can feel it. Feel it in your chest, a desperate need to perceive and be perceived. Wrap yourself in the darkness of the pit. Are you all right, Lily? Bear witness. I don't have a choice, it's the only option I got. What do you think you're doing? Get away from there. Your cousin dives towards you, but not before the light from your phone illuminates the chamber. Oh! What am I seeing? What am I seeing? Lily, Lily, are you right? Oh, thank God you're alive. It looks like you had a seat. I can see things around you. How many kids disappeared? No, that's too many kids. It's not the children. It looks like you had a seizure or something and then you and Tabby just conked out. I'm fine. Uh, you can barely open your eyes. You're not fine. Neither of you move a muscle. I don't want you to strain yourself while you're still recovering from whatever that was. I'm gonna get you both some help. I'll be back soon, I promise. Don't die on me, all right? You fade, uh, you fade black out of consciousness as your companion clambers out of the pit, intent on your rescue. You rise up on your elbows, head still swimming from the visions you surround, uh, your surroundings coming back to into focus. Your head throbs as the knocking continues. Now magnitude's more intense than ever. Though it, you, through it you once again hear the panic voices of bickering teenagers echoing down these stone corridors. Becca, you're just gonna get us more lost if this way. If you're so sure, then why don't you just leave? I can't believe I let Alexis talk me into inviting you in the first place. Becca, I'm just trying to help. I said go. Okay, I will, Alexis. You don't have to go with her. You know that, right? I, um, pick a side, Alexis. I'm sure Becca knows where we're going. She wouldn't just lie. Sorry, Rosalina. The increasingly desperate voices of the teens are drowned out by the thunderous knocking. You can practically feel the ground shaking beneath you can almost see the walls vibrating with the intensity of the hellish sound. God, the knocking is not helping my headache. What the hell just happened? Yeah, I'm gonna say we're probably the only ones who saw the ghosts. Um, I remember diving, you diving towards me. Did you know something would happen? I've seen horror movies. You looked like you were about to wander off and get yourself killed. I didn't want to let you out of my sight, not down here. Would you look at that? Rosalina knew exactly where to go. Rosalina appears in the passageway to your left. She's out of breath and it looks like she's been crying. 
I'm so sorry I snuck off like that. I just wanted Alexis to think I was cool. The entire cavern shakes with the sound of a rock ball. I don't know what the hell is up with the knocking, but that, uh, but that is the sound of a mine collapse. Vic, up the ladder, both of you. Wait, Becca and Alexis are still down there. You can't just leave them here. I know which way they were going. They'll listen to you this time, I promise. Do you have a death wish, little girl? This isn't a movie. The best thing we can do to help those girls right now is to not be buried alive ourselves. Mm. Oh god. What's the right choice here? I don't want Alexis to die. And technically, they do have that little hole they can climb through still. As long as it doesn't collapse on them. But I don't want Tabitha to stay down here either. And I th I think if I stay down here with that... Okay, okay, I'm taking Rosalina and leading. You reach towards Ro Rosalina. Made the right. Uh, you made their. They made their choice, Rosalina. Don't die from their mistake. We can't go after them. The mine is coming apart, Rosalina. We can't go after them. What if they don't make it? They're already across. Uh, across the bridge. You can cross it too if you want. I don't care. Rosalina hesitates for a moment. Alexis, Becca. The way out is this way. If you just follow my voice, you'll be able to make it out. Okay, let's go. Oh, I hope they can make it out. She grabs your hand and the two of you start climbing. Woo, this way, come on. Your cousin moves with the kind of swiftness you'd expect from someone who'd spent her entire life working in and around coal mines. Becca, Alexis, can you still hear me? The knocking drowns out Rosalina's desperate shouts as the three of you crawl closer and closer to the entrance. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I left you guys. It's deafening now as if someone were trying to break through the walls with fists of iron. Continue towards the entrance. You continue to push forward. Your burning muscles giving way to the pure adrenaline. Then comes the sound of splintering wood. You pick up the, the pace, the entrance is clo so close. I'm so sorry. Push through. And there it is. Freedom. Oh, they're not getting out that way. The three of you managed to squeeze through the entrance just as the wall of the mines came crushing down. Alexis? Do you think the other two... Maybe they got out. It's possible, right? Maybe there's another entrance or something. Or maybe they're still alive in there. Oh god. I'm so sorry. Rosalina, are you okay? Your dad's on his way. He should be here any minute. I'm so sorry. I'm going back to camp. I'll be back with some men. And they can start digging. Oh, I hope they didn't die in there. But I'd rather get out with Tabitha than have Tabitha die down there for me. I'll call Earl. It takes a bit of time, but eventually Tabitha arrives with men and a machine to start digging through the rubble. You, Stella, and Kanik are afforded a quiet moment to yourselves as the other get to work. Mm. Do you think Becca and Alexis are okay? There were survivors in the last collapse. Alexis doesn't deserve this. Nobody deserves this. I'm sorry if you took it that way, but de she definitely didn't. If you and Tabby didn't pull Rosalina out when you did, you all might have wound up buried down there. I think you did the right thing. <sighs> Should probably say something about the vision. There was a stone carving on the wall of that pit. It gave me some sort of vision. I saw what happened to this place. Are 
you sure it wasn't just out of suggestion? We talked about the mines a lot today. I don't know, Neeks. You weren't down there. Lily and Tavi had, like, simultaneous seizures next to a creepy stone carving. It was like something out of a movie. Just because they passed her or had a seizure doesn't mean it wasn't auto-suggestion. Uh, the entities in the mine. Like shadows of dead miners. I'm pretty sure Tabitha and I saw some ghosts down there. Did you not see them? I'm pretty sure Tapitha and I saw some ghosts down there. They were right behind you before you left. Did you not see them? Oh, I didn't see anything other than the two of you in that carving. That's super weird. I don't want to doubt your experience, but you were deep in a dark abandoned coal mine. You might have just been primed to see things. You know, now that I think about it, that totally fits the profile for some of the Tommy Docker stories. What if they're actually bona fide ghosts? Oh, Stella. The thing that happened down there is centered around the main chamber where I saw the cavern. Stella showed me a photo of weird stuff. Yeah, really weird stuff. Are you sure those were Tommy knockers? Depends on what you mean by sure. Is anyone really sure of anything? They fit the description pretty well, and I don't know what else they'd be. I have no idea what happened in there. I need to do some reading on mind collapses, I guess. Uh, what happens now? Hey guys, I don't think she's quite ready to talk just yet. What happened down there? Da-da. There's so much. I think Tommy Knockers brought down the mine. She's okay. I made sure of that. Thank you, Lily. I just wish I could have kept her from going in there in the first place. If I just paid closer attention to her, maybe none of this would have happened. And those kids wouldn't be down there. I can't help but feel like it was my responsibility to prevent this, and I blew it. Being way too hard on you. The teens are reckless. There's only so much you can do. And the shorter the leash, the worse the relationship. Don't blame yourself for the choices someone else made. As a former reckless teen myself, and as a current reckless adult, yeah, she's right. I guess that's true. I've tried to let Rosalina make her own mistakes and learn from them. But that's for staying up late or going too fast on her skateboard, not this. Rosalina told us you two have been lying in, uh, living in the library. I think she was trying to get away from that. Oscar sighs. Rosalina told you that. Yes, it's true, but you have to understand there's something in that house. We believe you, Oscar. Okay, so, so it isn't a money thing. It is a ghost. I couldn't let it hurt her, and since I didn't know how to get rid of it, I set up a back room at the library for us. Just until I can figure out how to fix things. I know she hates it, but I thought it would be better for her. Instead, it just drove her away, staying with friends, not checking in, and now this. It's all because of that house. And because of me. Because I haven't been able to fix this. I just wish she could understand. Hmm. Stella's right, we believe you. And we'll totally help you get rid of your ghost. Or more likely, we'll figure out what non-ghost thing it actually is. Either way, though, we're here for you. Thanks, you guys. That really means a lot. I shouldn't have kept this to myself, but I was afraid of seeming ridiculous. To Stella? You should have at least told Stella. Dad, you must be so mad at me. Oh no, Ro uh, oh, Rosa, no. Of course I'm not mad at you. Do you think that maybe they got out? Maybe there's another exit somewhere. 
Rosalina? I should have pushed back harder. I knew the way out. I should have made them come with me. I just don't want them to be dead. I'm sorry, Dad. You don't have to be sorry. You're alive and safe. We couldn't... We couldn't have gone back for them, right? We wouldn't have made it out if we went back. Yeah, but we had to. There just wasn't enough time. I know how hard this is, but sometimes people have to make difficult decisions. It's just not fair. Why me and not them? I know how difficult this is, and you can be upset for as long as you need to be, Rosa. I think the best thing you can do for your friends right now until we get them out of there is to enjoy your life you have. I know I haven't made that easy for you. I know you've been frustrated with the choices I've made. Gonna, but I'm gonna do what it takes to move us back into our house. We're gonna have a good life again, Rosa. I'm sorry I didn't do this sooner. I'm sorry this is what it took. Dad. We are on the case. Take care of Hugo's problem. We'll be okay, I promise. I'm gonna take her home. I guess we'll see the three of you tomorrow. And thank you, Lily. You have no idea how much I appreciate what you've done for Rosalina. As Oscar and Rosalina leave, your, co uh, your cousin exhaustedly saunters over to you. Alright, Lily. My men are set up to start digging. Let's go home and get some rest. Now hold on a minute, Miss Scarlet. Mind if we have a quick word with your cousin? Miss? In private? I need a cough. <coughs> I'm choking on spit. Okay, fine. Just make it quick, and don't you dare try and pull anything on her. She did nothing wrong here. Ladies, I'm afraid this means you too. Don't need to talk to us. We witnessed this too. Oh sure, but that can wait. We know where to find y'all. What a coincidence, running into you two nights in a row. This is my colleague, Deputy Dirksen. He was bowling yesterday. Pleased to meet you, Lily. I apologize for my absence yesterday. It was my special bowling night, you see. Man has to have his me time. But I was briefed on the events of last night, even though we're still not sure if what we uh, went on could be considered a crime. Duke has been missing since then, though we found neither hide nor hair of him. Could be he's just on an extended hunting trip. They saw the footage. It wouldn't be the first time he's done something like that. I was told the footage showed his supposed body, but we couldn't get that camera working, so no way to confirm until we track him down. Now I understand both of these were terribly unfortunate accidents that had nothing to do with you being in it, the area, but as officers of the law, you have to understand that we get a little suspicious when we see the same face multiple times in a row. And, um, we have to ask, what exactly were these teenagers doing in a shut uh, shuttered mine owned by your family? And why were you down there with them? You've got to understand where we're coming from. Two kids, 15 and 14, are buried alive down there. And maybe they're dead and and you were on the premises. Whether or not that was merely coincidence remains to be seen, but we've got to do our diligence here. Mm -hmm. We were not chaperoning them. I'll get to your questions, but we also need to talk about the man that's been stalking me. talk to them about that. I don't know if I... I think I'm good on that one. I don't have to talk to you. I know my rights. If it wasn't for me, they'd all be dead. I saw some teens sneak into abandoned mines, so I went after them. Some mine collapse? We'll do this one. We saw some teens sneak into an abandoned mine, so we went after them. We were just trying to do the right thing. Of course, of course. Very noble of you. Pardon our questions, just trying to gather all the facts, you see. Just, just being thorough. Our duty is officers of the law. Well, if there's nothing more you can tell us, I suppose we'll let you go about your evening. But 
We may be in touch. Have a good one. It is weird that they don't want to talk to Stella and Kanik at all. Deputy Dirksen tips his hat to you. The two officers wander back towards the mine. Dirksen taking note as they examine the scene. You make your way towards Stella and Kanika. I just can't believe two nights in a row isn't my fault, Nix. Stella, no. This is all just an awful coincidence. It's not your fault. If it's anybody's fault, it's probably my fault. None of this was happening until I showed up. Oh, hey, guess the cops are done with you. What, are they going to take you in for being present for uh, present at an accident? Sorry if they gave you a hard time. Small cops, you know, small time. Small town cops. Always blaming everything on drifters. Even acts of God, I guess. Excellent, you didn't get arrested. Now come on, let's get back to the estate. I'd like to get some rest before I have to deal with the fallout of everything that happened tonight. I'll see you tomorrow, okay, Lily? Excuse me. I... Just stop trying to get my cousin killed, Stella. Come on, let's go. Tabitha starts walking to her car, pulling you by your arm. Yes, silently follow. Are you kidnapping me? I can walk to the car on my own. I'll text you when we're back. I'll text you when we're back. Tabitha doesn't say a word as the car cuts along the darkened road. You try to keep an eye on the surrounding wilderness as she drives, wary of what may lurk behind the tree line. Hmm. Mm-hmm. about today. Tabitha doesn't answer. We'll, we'll drop that. Tabitha's eyes remain fixed on the road. How you holding up? Poorly. But I'd really rather we didn't get into it. Hmm. Do you think Becca and Alexis are okay? We won't know for days at the earliest. The parents should keep t uh, tighter reins on them. I never got into any trouble like that when I was a teen. And I have Perlan to thank for that. You don't call her mother. You don't call her mom. Hate hated it at the time, but that strictness paid off. What am I telling you this for? Because you trust me. Whoa, are we bonding? You can tell me stuff. I'd like to know more about you. You could talk to me. And about Perlan from that matter. Maybe later this week. I don't have the energy to get into it right now, but I think I'd like that. She's warming up to us. Oh, she's warming up to us. I don't think the parents are to blame here. Ooh, ooh, that is a... A lot of adults who should have done a better job tonight. No, I don't think the parents are blamed for this. They can do as much as they want, but at the end of the day, the kids are the kids. <laughs> and they can go where they want to go. I beg to differ. People who are already, are, aren't ready to be parents shouldn't be parents. And clearly, there are some parents at fault for this who weren't ready. Take Oscar. There are tons of people more qualified to be a parent who can't even conceive. And here he is having a kid at 19 and clearly letting her do whatever the hell she wants. He was looking for her. It's not fair. I'm not gonna ask that, that's a sensitive question. Oscar's house is haunted, Tabitha. <laughs> I don't think it's fair to pass judgment. I think that I'm just gonna... 
okay, never mind. I do dare to ask this question because I don't like the other questions and I don't want to remain silent either. Do you want kids? Seems like that struck a nerve. Lots of people want kids. Mm. You and Kanika really don't seem to get along. She pushes my buttons. I like her. Good for you, she doesn't like me. Why do you treat Stella like that? Didn't you two used to be friends? It was a very different time in my life. I just wish she'd get that we're not high school uh, high schoolers anymore. I'm a different person than whoever she thinks I uh, she knows. Okay. I'm gonna ride in silence for the rest of it. I don't want those other two questions. Your eyes wander back to the tree line as you and Tabitha slink back into silence. You once again cross the threshold into the estate. The musty cinch of the decay mansion greeting you with its undertone of mildew and wood rot. Well, this day was a lot more stressful than it needed to be, and I'm sure it's the pre uh, precursor to the horrifically stressful week. I'm going to bed. I suggest you do the same. Thanks for calling me about those kids, by the way. It was unexpected. You could have... No, you should have waited for me. I'm too tired to argue. I'll see you in the morning. Tabitha turns and makes her way up the stairs. Her posture defeated. Turn in. You head to your room and turn in. You collapse in Tabitha's dusty guest bed. Your head empty of thoughts after your time in the Shaw Mine. You barely even notice the dust. Your phone buzzes on the table. Well, these are uh, these are those things, right? Kanika sends a picture of the ditchlings by the side of the road. I saw them again too. Another picture this time of them staring from a tree. What the fuck? These things are definitely not har hairless monkeys or raccoons or whatever. I don't know what the hell they are. I guess there's more to them being here than the mind collapse. No way, I'm sleeping tonight. You think about looking out the guest room window, but at this point, you're too exhausted to leave your bed. The adrenaline from the evening is finally wearing off, replaced by a creepy exhaustion. A creeping exhaustion that threatens to overwhelm you. Your limbs feel heavy, your eyelids slipping down over your eyes, even as you stare down at the ominous picture, pictures on your phone. If it weren't for the pit of dread bawling in your stomach, you would almost feel comfortable as you settled in between the covers. Your tired bones sinking into the decrepit mattress. When you close your eyes, your thoughts drift to Alexis and Becca, terrified and alone, if not already dead. That better be Tabitha. That better be Tabitha. I swear to God, if that's not Tabitha, I'm upset. Your eyes shoot back open, your heart pounding as the door to your room swings open. Just the cat. It's always just the cat. It's nice to see another living being. Even one as unfriendly as Tabitha's cat. The comfort of her presence sets your mind at ease. And you're finally, you finally slip into a deep sleep. My mind is not set at ease. Cats do not have opposable thumbs. How did that cat get in here? Oh no, I guess technically I've seen a cat open a door before. Oh, Tabitha. Tabitha knows something and she's not telling us. Tabitha knows something. I just know she does. Hmm. What's in the basement? Hmm. Okay. Save. 
save that real quick. Okay. I think that's good for today. Hmm, that was um, a lot, a lot to take in right there. That was quite a bit to take in. Um, I'm still definitely gonna try to romance Stella. That's on the list. If I can romance her, I'm romancing her. And I'm also gonna try really, really hard not to kill her on accident. And I'm gonna try really hard not to kill Tabitha either. And hopefully we can rekindle their, um, Hopefully we can rekindle their, uh, friendship. That would be great, right? No, this is really good. I'm really enjoying this. I wish my reading was better. It just went to shit today, but I mean, that's fine. I'm not always great at reading. And we can only get better by doing more of it. No, this is really good. I'm very invested in the story and I'm very excited for next time. However, next time's gonna have to take, like, next time's probably gonna be a while because I know that I have something next Saturday with my grandparents and sorry my grandparents are a little bit more important <laughs> so we'll have to continue this later later but that's okay this has been good I've enjoyed this thank you guys for being here I enjoy the company I enjoy you taking this journey with me uh, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>